You're trying to lose body fat. Check this out. You're better off building than you are to try to burn. You want to lose weight? Stop trying to burn so many calories. Build the machinery that burns the calories for you. So whether you want to build muscle, you want to get stronger, or you want to get leaner, your goal should be to build muscle. That's the best approach. I wish more people took that. You yes. got to build the machine. That's it. I feel like we've actually made this pretty popular now because I've seen the counter now. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm uh, sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I would love to hear what that argument is. Oh, I'll share it with you. It's not, I mean, it's just a stupid, it's the stupid calorie argument always. Yeah. Mm. Oh, there's fitness people out there that are telling you that if you want to lose weight, you should add calories or you should do this. This is the, you know, they try and do, oh, uh, God. Use, use the um, uh, calories in, calories yeah, out, or yeah, thermo yeah. thermodynamics uh, argument. Listen, always. listen, I there's people telling you that if you want to run real fast, you need to give yourself a little space to get some runway. No, 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 just take off right where you are. Okay, that's what we're saying, essentially, is we're giving you some runway. If you build muscle, you're going to build more of that calorie-burning machinery. You're going to make it easier for yourself to get leaner and stay leaner. So will you lose weight as quickly as if you just cut your calories or just try to burn a ton of ca you know calories through activity? No. You go strap yourself to a treadmill and starve yourself. Yeah, you'll lose weight way faster. Let's see you are, well let's see where that ends up. Let's see where this, you are 6 months or a year from now. You're going to be with 90% with the 90% sustainability of always has to be part you, of the You got to build that machinery. There's get an, your metabolism there's to speed up. Another actual angle to this also. In fact, I actually just had this conversation with my brother-in-law. Um, who's got to lose a lot of weight right now. And he, his thought process was, he's like, you know, I didn't even want to come bother you until I proved to myself that I can I'm walk in every single day. I'm trying to make better food choices. And so I'm, I'm going to stick to this, you know, cardio thing. And, and then once I got that, then I'm going to come to you and then I'm going to ask weights. I'm like, well, brother, I said, you're better off that time that you're spending going on that hour high of actually lifting some weights or at least splitting that yeah. time up with lifting weights. He said, oh, you know, I, just, I wanted to first do this. And I said, well, let me explain to you why you want to do that or why you would be better off lifting weights. And I know his, like, eating habit. My brother likes to drink drink beer. He likes to eat candy. Like, he's not the, he's definitely nowhere near, like, where he needs to be mm. eat, nutritionally, right? I said, so <clears throat> let's say, and let's just use hypothetical numbers. Right now. I said, you go, let's say, for a run for an hour and you burn four or 500 calories, Okay. The drawback of you running for, for or just, just running and not lifting weights is you run for four or 500 calories. And then let's say we just had this barbecue with the family. You and I are getting some Stella's right now. We have two or three of those. Have some extra try. And you over you overeat your calories by those 500 calories. It literally negates that hard work you did yeah. there. Okay. So now let's say instead of that, you did a weightlifting workout that burned about the same amount of calories. Same situation with the overage on the calories, but here's the positive part of lifting weights is you've now sent a signal to your body that your body needs muscle because, oh, you're stimulating. What is this guy doing? And the overage on calories, some of those calories are going to get partitioned over actually to building muscle and not just being stored as fat. Which also turns into uh, <coughs> it, the, is the machinery that burns more calories all the time. Exactly. So yeah. you get this like double win by that and then so and he was like this light bulb you could see went off in his head like oh shit i said yeah i said that that that, that way you're not so stressed out about always under having to eat so low calorie so low calorie man when you're lifting weights consistently and you have a day where you eat a little over that little over is going to get partitioned over to building muscle listen a lot of this is counterintuitive <coughs> but i'll say this look at the evidence okay the evidence is not that people can't lose weight the evidence is that people can't keep it off. So that approach doesn't work. It's 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 like this, okay? It's no different than this. You want to build wealth? There's there's two potential approaches. One of them is to work more hours. You make 40 bucks an hour. Well, I'm just going to work 12 hours a day, make more money. Yeah. That's that's one way to do it. Here's the other way. Continue doing what you're doing with your job. You work 8 hours a day, but now take that money. Right. Spend less and invest. Figure out a way to invest it so that that money makes money for you. Buy properties that make you a little bit of money, invest in the stock market build businesses that can run without you, et cetera, et cetera. Which one is the strategy that builds wealth? Is you working 12 hours a day going to build wealth? No. Mm -hmm. That'll make you more money right now, but it ain't going to build wealth. The, the investment strategy. So building muscle is literally investing. It's the same thing as <clears> investing. <throat> so if your goal is to lose as much weight as you can in the next four weeks, fine. Forget what I'm saying. Your goal is to lose weight, keep it off forever, and feel amazing and be able to eat more have a sculpted body. Yeah, that analogy is so clear. I, I, why I love that analogy too is because w one of the hardest parts about disciplining yourself, about spending less and investing, it's a slow process.
If you work, like it's you a said, snowball process, if you make $40 right? yeah. an hour and you work 12 hours a day, like you automatically it, make more. You, 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 well, you don't have a lot of extra money is what I'm saying. And that you have to, and then to invest it, it's like, you're, you're right. You're not going to get rich overnight. Yeah. You're not going to, you're not going to build a bodybuilder physique overnight, you know, building, building muscle, building muscle, building. it's a slow process. But what's great is over time. It, it you get you at such an advantage that the the rest of the work is so easy, yeah. Which is just like investing. It's like yeah, putting away a few hundred dollars every single month. You're not going to be a millionaire t tomorrow, but hey, ten years from now, because you've consistently done that for years and years, now you ain't got to work because your investments are covering yeah. what your 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 hourly is. Literally, now. the counter to this, I mean, you know, these calorie people are just the paycheck to paycheck people. It yeah. is, you know, I can just I can just work more. I'll yeah. just take more shifts. I'll do overtime on yeah. this weekend. And it's like, yeah, so you can burn yourself up and like lose all your free time. Yeah. Right. No, listen, you take two twins doing the exact same thing, both making the same money. One of them decides to work 50% more hours. The other one takes the investment strategy. Initially, the person working more hours is going to have more money. That's Initially, right. Initially, they are. But it's not going to take long for the person with the investment strategy to surpass the brother and then work less and less and less and continue to grow their wealth. That's what we're talking about. A lot of it's counterintuitive. Look, I'll give you another example, okay? I could tell somebody, and it took me years to figure this out. What's funny about what I'm about to say is the three of us who did not train all together at the same time, for the most part, came to the same conclusion. Uh, and this is what I'm about to say. I could tell somebody, cut your calories. And that's what I used to say. Or I could tell somebody, don't worry about cutting your calories. Hit your protein targets and prioritize them from whole foods. Hit 130 grams of protein a day or 150 or whatever, right? Do that instead of cutting the calories. Now, it sounds counterintuitive because I'm telling you to eat more. I'm, I'm making you eat more protein. But here's what happens. Eating more protein results in more satiety, results in less calories automatically. The person doesn't feel deprived. And that protein, in combination with strength training, builds more muscle, speeds up the metabolism, and leads to better long-term success. Same thing. It sounds counterintuitive. He's telling you to eat more? That doesn't make any sense. No, no, no. I don't give a, I don't care how intuitive or counterintuitive it is. Here's what I care about. What works? Yeah. And what works is this. Build, not try to burn everything. Now, yes, if you're trying to lose weight, don't go on a crazy bulk. That doesn't make any sense. We're going to add tons of body fat. But can you build muscle? Can you build lean muscle without gaining a ton of body fat or gaining no body fat? You can, especially when you're first uh, getting started. So this is the approach. And I wish more people knew this. And this is one of the reasons, not the only reason, but it's one of the reasons why the fail rate on diets and weight loss is nine, it's north of 90%. So all these morons on, on social media who are trying to counter this by saying the same old tired message, ask them, where's your evidence? Where's your evidence? Because it doesn't work. It's never worked. What's happening? It's not. People are gaining the weight back. Nobody's having success with this. So you who are trying to come out with the counter message because you want to get clicks or whatever, shut your mouth. <laughs> Just shut your face. Of the day. All right, today's giveaway again the new program, Maps Bands. Get it for free. Here's how leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win free access, we'll let you know in the comment section. Now, everybody else, there's 48 hours left for the launch. Okay, that means it's on sale, plus you get free stuff. So if you act within the next two days, here's what happens you get Maps Bands for $30 off, plus you get two ebooks for free. Ultimate Bodyweight Training Guide, and Quick Meals for Health and Fitness. So if you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below, or you can go to mapsbands.com and use the code BANDS30. All right, back to the show. Anyway, back to the protein. Yeah. Look, uh, you know, one of our partners is, is a company called Creatures of Habit. They make a high-protein oatmeal. Um, I love this so much, not because it's a high-protein oatmeal, but because people like to eat oatmeal for breakfast, and breakfast is one of those meals that uh, you don't have a lot of time. You want it to be convenient. Here you go. 30 grams of protein right out the gates. Add water. Warm it up the microwave. And you're totally done. So this is one of the reasons why we work with that company is, is what I just said, right? Hit those protein targets. This will this will lead you uh, to success better than just cutting calories. Uh, my favorite part is all the free cookies that we've been getting. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> people are making amazing oatmeal cookies. Creative creative people okay, so out there. the original ones that someone sent in were good. Very good. But these no bake ones that we just got, unbelievable. Do we know who sent them in? Doug, so we can give credit. Yeah, boy, I the first. I think we mentioned the first person on the, the last time we mentioned on the podcast, and I don't have that <clears throat> information in front of me right now. Yeah, but the most recent one, the no bake ones, is from 
Carrie Souter, I think I'm pronouncing okay. her oh, name right. Oh, you made it great. That was amazing. Yeah, so they're fantastic. So she used the maple uh, creatures of habit. She used uh, dates, pecans, coconut oil. They're fantastic. That's they really it? Were. Uh, yeah, and there was a chocolate coating on them, which is coconut oil and uh, unsweetened cocoa powder. That's all the ingredients? That's it. Yeah. But we will we can post the So she the, put uh, it together, recipe, yeah. you freeze it or refrigerate it, yes. and then boom. Yeah, and the instructions, she said to throw it in the freezer for like, I can't remember the time, on the in the freezer. But we actually just put it in the refrigerator, and it worked fine. The refrigerator got it cold enough to make them hard enough and make them perfect. You know what I like about this is that is uh, if you have kids because kids, you know, they like the treats or whatever, and you want to give them an alternative to the garbage crap that's out there. Mm -hmm. Why? I mean, this is a great like this like legit. It's not one of those fake like those healthy treats that really don't taste good. This one tastes good. Your kids will like it. You know what I what I what and this is I don't know if this is just your guys if you guys experience this or not. Um, because I was so consistent with with Max with like sugar treats things like that. And and by now I've allowed things to to creep in like here and there, and I like to be the one who controls that and gives that to him. I talked about giving him gummy bears at the movie theater stuff. It's pretty cool because these are the types of things that he's had pieces of, like these like homemade, yeah. you know, quote unquote yeah. healthier versions of treats. And so he would prefer that. So if you give him like a regular like, it's too sweet. Oh, it's way yeah, too yeah, sweet. Yeah, yeah. He'll give it back. Mm -hmm. We had we were at the Gilroy Gardens, and m my niece. She wanted an icy, and we're not gonna tell her she's 13 years old. We're gonna tell her she can't have an icy or whatever like that. So she she gets an icy, and Max sees that she has one, and he's like, I want one. And so we get, we take a little tiny one, right? Give it to him. And he's like, Oh, too much. <laughs> yeah, just you know, I remember that too, too sweet for I remember him. that mm -hmm. with my older kids, we'd go to um, birthday parties, and then that's when they would get soda because we never drink soda in the house. And I remember my kids would they would want this much in their cup, and then yeah. they wouldn't want any more. Because it was overwhelming. It's, yeah, it's like it, you train. You have to train your brain. One hundred percent that way. And any adult should know this. If you ever remembered your trend, your your you, know, you remember when you first had a glass of wine or beer? You think you fucking like you liked it the way you <laughs> yeah, like it now? Yeah, no, you yeah. didn't. Or coffee? Yeah, you Co worked on it. You did. Isn't that <laughs> yeah. crazy? We do that. Oh yeah, you worked. Like, on I'm gonna like, like this. The taste of beer. Yeah. yeah, and then maybe now you love it and stuff like that. But I've never met anybody who can honestly be. Oh yeah, the first time I taste that beer, it was like yeah. the best oh, thing I ever bullshit. had. Yeah, yeah you're a liar. Little... I still think it's disgusting. I mean, it's just I, I hate beer. I still, uh, so I've tried, dude. Justin. I've tried. I, I crave it for There's like a certain few things. I, I like. We had a barbecue, and I was like, that it was a hot day. Dude, and I, we're I, having a. Isn't it like that with cigarettes? Too? I miss beer. Do people actually? Do people actually like cigarettes the first time they do them? I don't think so. I feel like they have to keep. There must be like yeah, select few, but yeah, that that was always just an immediate no. Yeah, I feel like you have to try the, yeah. it, and you, like I, I remember I had family members who. Well, they the started reason, smoking as teenagers, and I remember them like they had to like keep doing it until they started to like it. I well, honestly thought it was just a cool thing, like because people would watch movies and it, yeah. it was really out there in pop culture. Everybody had a cigarette in their mouth, and they wanted to be James Dean and they wanted to be the cool guy, yeah. you know. And then it just was a thing, but it was always the you smell like a disgusting ashtray. So yeah. I you know, obviously I told you I I have right. I re I remember the first time doing that. Here's what it is disgusting tasting, but you feel. That that high the first time ever. It doesn't feel good to, for, for me. Oh, I, the, I, the head the head it. change the very first time, especially the very first time. It was it, it was such a major head change that that is what you're kind of drawn to. I figured. Yeah, you're I more figured. you're more drawn to that. Where where you're sipping a glass of wine or a beer, you're not getting drunk the first time having a, a, sipping the first glass of wine or beer. So it's like. You know, maybe you maybe once you finally get drunk, that's what you're drawn yeah. to originally is that that drunk feeling or mm. whatever. But well, so coffee is a great example. Actually, this is a good. <clears throat> what's funny that we're talking about this because this is how you develop good relationships with healthy food too. A absolutely. So I remember, right. like coffee. I never liked coffee. I only liked it if you sweeten the shit out of it and added milk, so it tasted like coffee candy. Yeah. Then, yeah. as an adult, when uh, especially when we first started the podcast, we I would start drinking coffee in the morning, and um, I didn't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. But I started to like it over time, and I think it's the association with. The caffeine, waking up, feeling good, getting a workout, and now I like the taste of black coffee. But I remember that transition. It took me a while mm -hmm. of drinking it on a regular basis to start to enjoy it, and it's the yeah. association that I built. Yeah, because it still tastes the same. I just perceive it now differently. No, you're you're so right, and so you do that with healthy food too. One hundred percent. I one hundred. I mean, that that's the the main takeaway from this conversation that I think is really interesting, and it's and it's, it's fascinating to watch it when you know I, as a parent I have control. 
right? Of this, yeah. this, this newborn and then toddler that's like growing up in this world. And so I can control how I introduce it, how I celebrate it. And the associations. Like yeah. And we can, to- and we've totally built these, this healthy relationship around certain foods and he's such a great eater. And I think, you know, as adults, we're no different. The difference is that we have many times decades of bad associations mm-hmm. with these healthy foods. I mean, I hated, you know, Brussels sprouts and broccoli and vegetables mm-hmm. most of my life. It took me till later on in my adulthood until I changed that association. Now there's times where I crave it. If we go off on trips and we eat out every single day and stuff yeah, like that, yeah. and, I like crave like a, a steak and vegetable, like Same a big bowl of vegetables. Yeah. I just, my body wants it because I've now. It's like home base. And what that is, well, like, how do you do that? Right. Like what I, the association that I've created when I eat that way, I, my digestion feels amazing. Yeah. So now, and then over time, that's right. My, you want my stomach feels good. I sleep good that night. I don't have bloat. And so what I've learned to, to attach to, oh man, when I eat this big bowl of broccoli, instead of filling up on like bread or pasta or like right. something like that, it's got a total different way I my body feels. And so now that I've paired that, my body now, especially when I'm off the other direction, craves What a great direction. example. Somebody's like, I can't <clears throat> learn to enjoy healthy food. Did you like coffee the first time you drank it? Mm-hmm. Same thing. No, Same yeah. exact thing. Yeah. It's interesting. We're talking about this too, because um, I've we have been struggling a bit because- you know, Ethan's at the age now, he's 13, and he's always, like, out and about with his buddies, and they're going to, like, you know, convenience stores, liquor stores, all these things, and getting, like, um, uh, like sodas and, like, candy and whatnot. And so he was kind of, like, going off the rails for a bit, and then he's, you know, he's starting to kind of realize, like, oh, this doesn't make me feel good. And, oh, this is, like, you know, inflaming my gums, and, like, he goes to the dentist, and it's, like, oh, and, and we're trying to kind of associate all these things with that. And so, you know, I love Courtney, but also like there's just been, we've been devoid of like any soda, any kind of like fizzy, anything. It's just all water. And I'm like, we can't, I mean, that's great. That's like ideal, but also we need to have options that are like maybe like a, an in-between thing. So maybe having like more mineral water available and like, mm. get, so you can still get that kind of same feel of it because there is something different about drinking something with bubbles in it mm-hmm. and then, Absolutely. you know, and like having some lime in there. Whatever. So we started doing okay. that. And like, so Topo Chico and like all these kinds of like, um, you know, mineral waters, I'm starting to bring them in to the house and he's finding himself like, again, building that association with that, like a more healthier version of it. And he's, he's craving them now and he's drinking way less soda. That's such an interesting thing to me. When I think about that, the, the carb, how carbonated beverages, there's like a craving for the carbonation. Yeah. It's really, well, that's what it's, the, it's right all, now what's going on with nitrogen in coffee. You see nitrogen's made its way in nitro, soda. Yeah. Too. yeah but night, but that's different. That's the mouthfeel. Like, yeah. Well, I guess it's all mouthfeel, what are you talking right? About? It's no, it's all mouthfeel. It's the same it's thing. But nitro is smooth and creamy. I mean, the point is the same thing. Yeah, right, it's like yeah. your, your brain is, get this sensation. Cause I used to, the Aurelius thinks that carbonated water is spicy. <laughs> Spicy? Oh, it's spicy. <laughs> that's you know, how everyone's everyone's like, too. It was like, ooh, it burns. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, oh, that's he funny. burped through yeah. his nose. He'd be like, oh. Yeah. Did you know that they that when that when carbonated uh water and beverages first came out, it, they were sold as medicines? Oh, really? Did you know that? No. Oh, I that's didn't. where because dude, my grandma used to like her recipe always for when I was sick was was uh Sprite or or seven up in in those like uh, saltine crackers. Saltine crackers. Yeah. What was that about like oh. 50s era or whatever? Yeah. Like that was So the answer. original, you could look up soda shops. They were at pharmacies. Mm-hmm. Pharmacists sold them and they would mix the carbonation. Well, they used the, for the longest time. Funny. So my aunt and uncle used to, when I would be sick over at their house, they had this uh, like Coke syrup that you used to. <laughs> they took out the carbonation. Gave no, it was like, it was medicine. It was sold as a, like, it was only a small thing and it was just the pure Coke syrup. And I for, it's for coughs. They used to use it for cough syrup. Just well, yeah, your throat. Well, originally yeah. had caffeine Probably in cola, it. yeah. Yeah, it was like cola. It was it was like cola syrup or whatever. Like Maybe that. there was uh, caffeine in it, and that helps because no, caffeine can be a bronchodilator. It, it was for your. It was for cough. Well, that's what I mean. Caffeine's a, uh, a mild bronchodilator. Oh, I don't. They know. used to give it to kids with asthma. You know that? Mm. But that with, no, when I kids had that. asthma before they had asthma treatments, kids would drink a big ass coffee in the morning. To get- <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Because uh, it's a bronchodilator. You know, Justin, you bring up a really Crazy. interesting because I'm not there yet, like to have to do that. But we have a lot of carbon. We have a lot of Sevias and carbonated water, like we do the um, what's that other La- Lacroix? Like yeah, we have Lacroix a lot of stuff. and those and bubblies. I, and I do think that's a smart strategy because 
if he gets introduced to that early and he likes that, and then he's with his friends when he's 13, 14 years old going to the liquor store and his friends go, it's not reach, a big deal. Yeah. They reach for Pepsi. He grabs he a LaCroix. Grabs that. No one's yep. going to say shit. Yeah. Exactly. He's in, he's at, he's still experiencing the whole hanging out with his friends, yeah, going yeah. and buying like a drink and stuff like that. He just prefers that because he grew up tasting that. I think there's a smart strategy probably as yeah. parents, like maybe introducing things like that for that exact reason. Yeah, I never really strategy. thought, I never really thought about that until right now because like max drinks like water like he's literally like mostly yeah. water he doesn't even like juice yeah that's how they started yeah for sure yeah. you know it was like nice and controlled dude well, that's the mistake gets away is, from you <laughs> the mistake i feel like is all these you know healthy juices that are marketed to kids they're not they're oh, yeah, yeah. 30 grams of sugar, it's sugar. It's like you kidding me they're like that is priming them for soda yeah like you want to prime your kid for soda give them a juice box dude. because the juice box has got 20 to 30 grams of sugar, which is like what soda has. In I it. know, I know parents whose kids that all they gate because in the 80s and 90s, that's what they thought was healthy. Give your kid juice. Uh -huh. Little kids with tooth decay, little kids, four or five years old, because they were drinking all they drank with apple juice mm -hmm. all the time. Tooth yeah. decay. We grew up on that. Like that was around, oh, which probably contributed to my sugar addiction because wow. the orange juice and apple juice was in the, in the, inside the, that was like, if I wasn't drinking milk or water, it was orange juice or apple so juice. So I didn't else. drink that stuff, not because my parents thought it was unhealthy, but because it cost more money than water. <laughs> so my parents <laughs> always save you money. Drink for the drink fossil. garden hose. <laughs> Doug, did you find that where the sodas uh, originated? The, the yeah, the soda shops uh, definitely were pharmacies. Yeah. yeah. I think they, he, if you ever watch uh, It's a Wonderful Life, oh, yeah. don't they have a soda shop there? Yeah, they which do. Is probably a pharmacy as what well. That? It's a Wonderful Life. It's it? a, the old. Uh, that's one of the most classic movies. Classic Christmas, Christmas movies. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. You never seen that? Mm -mm. Oh, the angel gets its wings. It'll or, make you cry, bro. Every right? time a bell rings. Bell rings. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, they they, they <laughs> said that it had medicinal properties and it cured all kinds of different shit because someone figured out how to carbonate. You know, water. Yeah. What is this? Oh, it's magic. I want to try, like, uh, the stores have, Whoa. like, Target, so that have, like, the... Um, Where you can carbonate yourself? Yeah, yeah. I bought one of those for Jeff. Oh, you did? I did. What do you think? I guess if, you, if, you're, if you're not partial to the how much carbonation, it's, not, it's fine. But she likes it super carbonated, and it didn't reach that level. Uh, like you know how Topo Chico yeah. is like way more carbonated there's than like, so many bubbles per yeah. whatever like square footage in there <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what that measure is I'm just gonna bullshit my way BPS down. yeah hey how many BPS dude the BPS in there is like bubbles super per square foot concentrated and high <laughs> yeah it does though if you have a uh, San is that, what to, is that why we all like Topo Chico so much is it's it's, it's really more than normal yeah yeah it's more bubbly yeah. compare it to San Pellegrino uh, San Pellegrino doesn't bite like San Pellegrino, like uh, Topo Oh, Chico. you know what? Yeah. I mean, I we all like Topo Chico. I like yeah. Topo Chico also. It's got way more bite. I, but yeah. I've never like compared head they to head. like the fuck out of it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's funny to me. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, and the nitrous is just like way smaller bubbles, right? And Did, so that's what gives it that. Have cream. you guys seen, do you guys see, have, uh, I actually bought some. I, and tri I tried uh, the Pepsi now has Nitro? nitrogen. In I bet it feels good. It's weird. So you know what it reminds me of? Because uh, I love nitro coffee. Love it. The so best. it's like butter coffee. The best. So oh. it, you, you, okay, to that point, like this kind of buttery, creamy. Yeah. Taste. So it, you know what it reminds me of is when you have like a Coke float or a root beer float. Oh god, don't say that. I'm gonna go buy some. The bottom of it after the melt. Like after cream's the gone. ice cream's gone. Yes. Oh, I'm gonna go buy. It some has that milk. frothy. Don't say that. Yeah. Try. So what I wanted to do Where was do you actually, buy it? I wanted to oh at Target or yeah. any like, right now. Safeway. They're everywhere, yeah. dude. Yeah. They're everywhere. They come in this, they look like a brown, like a it's brown Pepsi, can. And it's it, it's yeah. tall. The reason why I actually don't like it is because it comes in a it comes in a big tall can oh, and it's like much. 380 calories. Mm. Well, that's a lot of calories for me to just have a little That's soda. a lot of diabetes right there. I don't know. <laughs> it's too much. But I what I haven't done, so I gave him my, my buddy, my buddy, when he comes to my house, he's always mad because I have all diet stuff and he's he's a regular soda drinker. And uh, I had those, and he like sucked them down. And he loved them, and I was like, I I'm, I was keeping them because I wanted to pour it over ice cream because I figured, okay, that's a uh, lot. Yeah. If it's got that Coke, kind of creamy Coke flavor float. already, and yeah. then you pour it over the ice cream, it might be bomb. You know, my kids have never had a root beer float. I'm, no? embar there I'm is, embarrassed there to say. Have, there, there they are what? right there. See those? Oh, what's the what's the blue one? What's the difference? I think one's diet, one's not. Okay, Henry. Oh, no, one, vanilla. One's vanilla. Oh, my oh, God. Okay, so that's the one. Oh, that's why it tasted like the ice cream. So oh, I've only had the, the vanilla one. I haven't had a regular one yet. Oh, I'm going to have to try the regular one. Okay, so what's your favorite root beer, though? Because that, that determines a and w. something for me. Oh, and ws great. Dad's is I like them all, but I like a and is one of my favorites. Yeah, Henry Weinhardt's, dude. I never had that. Oh, what? Yeah? <laughs> now, is it sweet or is it more? Because, you know, root beer can either be more candy-ish or more like bite. It's too. more, I guess you'd say it's more like a bite, but it's like... 
brew. It's like brewed like a beer. So it's like more, I don't know. It has more kind of like a, an adult. How did root beer get its, its it. name? Why, why is it root beer? It comes from a root. The sarsaparilla. Sarsaparilla, yeah. yeah. Sarsaparilla root. So that, that's what the, fla the flavor, the flavor comes from a root. You guys want to hear something mm -hmm. funny? And then why a beer though? So why is it, why is it not root? Because it was, they just named it did beer. Just, make yeah. it like an alternative to beer. It foams up. So when you're ordering it at the bar, you don't feel like such a turd? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'll have a beer yeah, too. Yeah, 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 root. Root beer. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, did you guys know that? Okay, sarsaparilla root. That's in root beer. There used to be a supplement. This is great. I remember this. I used to take this. What a waste of money. Sarsaparilla root. It used to be Smilax. Look up Smilax. Oh, I do remember that. Do you remember that? I do remember. Raised that. testosterone. Take Smilax. So I remember. I bought because I talk. I bought everything. By the way, a fifteen-year-old trying to raise her testosterone. That's <laughs> yeah, hilarious, bro. That's it, like it probably worked the opposite. Bro, for that's like putting a shot glass in the ocean. You know what I mean? Oh, I got more water. It's yeah. there somewhere. Yeah, no. But I bought everything. Right, I bought everything as a kid because I worked and I just wanted to build muscle. And I remember, buy, you know, Smilax pills. And my uncle, who's a herbalist. He's like, what's that? I looked at it and he's like, why don't you just drink root You know beer? what? You actually should explain to the audience so they understand. Because as, as here's why I thought as a teenage boy that taking a testosterone. They still sell it. They do. Doug, look up Smilax. Uh, is Smilax sarsaparilla root? I think they're connected. Listen, oh, they I'll, are. It is. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. That's all it is then. That's what my, see, my uncle made fun of me. He's like, why don't you just drink root beer? I'm like, shut up. <laughs> yeah, you don't work wow. out. <laughs> That'd it's full circle now. I get it. It's uh, a pharmacy, dude. That's, that's you want to know what's funny? I'm gonna buy it again. And see what happens, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, bro. I'll, come on. Okay, so I listen, have a listen though. Let's <laughs> let's explain to the audience, especially our young audience, because this was a, this is what I didn't understand until I got older. Like how like testosterone boosters work. Why are they so popular? Why are there so many of them? Why are you you still see you see research that's around them that shows they do work? Why is it not? Why would it not boost me at 15 years old? Why would I get more? Okay, so 90 percent of the quote unquote test boosters really just increase libido. So that's number one. There's lots of compounds out there that will temporarily increase libido. And that gives the person like the feeling of like, oh my God, I have more testosterone. So that's number one. Number two, the 10% that actually raise testosterone really only do it in men with depressed testosterone. If your testosterone's high and kind of a waste of time. Even then it brings you up to like normal, high, yeah. not superficial levels yeah. so if you're a, a young teenage boy which most average young teenage boys are already peak testosterone for their yeah. life they're already at the upper uh, upper echelon so where you see benefits is the 50 year old guy who was like so low yes yeah, so low then he takes it and it brings him up to here and yeah. then that, and that's a dramatic difference yeah. for a 50 year old guy who's in the floor who all of a sudden takes this yeah thing. but you take a 15 year old boy who never even goes below here and he's mostly up here all the time and you give him his time waste he's of like, time nothing yeah like waste of money and, and look even i always thought it would do this it would put me above my line yeah like oh i'm like taking steroids right now if you if you look let me put it this way if you took something that gave you a 15 percent measurable increase in testosterone which is statistically significant still nothing even if you had high testosterone right your number is at let's say you're at 800 right you're gonna go up what a hundred something points on, on 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 not on free testosterone on total testosterone yeah, you're not you're not gonna feel it's that. not gonna do anything yeah. for you it's not going to do anything yeah. for you. So now like there's supplements out there like ashwagandha that'll raise testosterone a little bit, but also builds muscle, also improves, you know, stamina and strength. The stamina and strength and all that stuff is not the testosterone boosting effects. That's mm -hmm. kind of a side effect. It's because things like ashwagandha is an effective, uh, what's known as uh, adaptogen and adaptogens, uh, they improve your body's ability to adapt to well, stress. Wouldn't you guys say too, like, if I had somebody who has like really low or, or low testosterone, like there's things that you could do in their their diet and sleep regimen and lifting weights yeah. that will be far more Way impactful more impact. yeah. than the testosterone. Like you getting somebody who has lower testosterone, no matter what their age is, to prioritize sleep, eat a more balanced, healthy diet, and strength train two times a week. Yep you will show rocketing testosterone levels right. in comparison to the best testosterone It's not just the testosterone either. There was a study they, they, where they tested all these different men and they looked at total, total free testosterone. So total testosterone, free testosterone, and androgen receptor density. And then they had them work out and they looked at their results. Now, all these men were within a particular range. So some men had lower within range. Some people had higher within range. And the correlation between testosterone and muscle wasn't that big. You know what it was? Androgen receptor density. The more androgen receptors they had, the more muscle they built. Okay. What builds androgen receptor density? Lifting weights. Mm -hmm. So even if your testosterone numbers don't go up 
from lifting weights, your the amount of testosterone you'll, you'll, you'll <clears throat> utilize goes up because the, the androgen receptor density that. So in other words, if you had a 400 testosterone level and you doubled your androgen receptor density, it would be like doubling your testosterone or more <clears throat> because there's more that the androgen receptors do than just uh, allow mm -hmm. testosterone to exert its effect. Well, there is one thing you can get from test boosters. It's gyno. <laughs> no, <that's, laughs> you got that going for that's you. for the hor that's from the ho the hormones that they sold as pro yeah, hormones yeah, yeah. That's, oh, the pro that's the hormones. shit i that's took right. so okay how would <laughs> you explain the so since we went this direction i actually wasn't even planning on talking about this but i want i do want to hear how you would explain this i was trying to articulate this to my brother-in-law so I, I was talking about him about his diet and trying to get him to strength train the other thing that he was like frustrated with that he was he's like he was asking he's like hey how much how much testosterone are you taking because we have yeah. he's on hormone therapy he's been on hormone therapy for like oh, the last cool. like three four months or whatever and he's like, you know, I just, I don't really feel it. He's like, I don't I feel, and he's taking the exact same dose yeah. that I'm taking. Right. And he's like, yeah, I was, I was telling, he's telling his wife, Jerlene, that he's like, I, I was going to tell her to give me double the dose. I'm like, no, dude. I Bro, said, calm down. Yeah. I said, I, said, <laughs> you, I said, you know what? I said, this is what I explained. I was like, maybe you can put better words to this, but I was like, you know, you're, you're doing for exercise, you're doing cardio. Your diet isn't dial, mm -hmm. dialed in mm -hmm. uh, really well. And then you add in this, this testosterone. Okay. What you're probably only feeling, if I had to guess, was probably an increase in your libido and sex drive. And you're not feeling this crazy strength, energy, yeah, like you don't feel yeah. like, oh, like, mm -hmm. like that's probably what all you're get, all you're really getting from that. I said, when you take testosterone synthetically like this, all it's really doing is taking you up to like your optimal levels. But where it starts to feel, the feeling becomes compounding is when you start coupling it with eating well, train, lifting weights, then you're going to feel like, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna build muscle faster. You're gonna recover quicker, yeah. and your you're body's gonna, actually more anabolic. At yes, that point. so you're gonna feel way better. But if all you do, you take testosterone, and you don't, you're not using it. Yeah, and that's you're not, what's happening. You're not eating your pro. You're yeah. not hitting your protein intake right. You're doing your exercise regimen is cardio only. You're you're all you might feel from it is an increased libido. Yeah, he you feels will. something. But you're not using it, right? Yeah. It's like eating extra protein, but not having the signal to utilize that protein in the way that you want, essentially. Right. right. So you more testosterone will give you some effects if you were low. So go from low to high, there's health benefits because being low is not healthy, right? Just yeah. like being too high with like, if you, let's say you took this ridiculous doses, too low is not good. High normal is better, but you there are ways you can use more of that testosterone through your lifestyle. And if you don't do those things, then you'll feel something, but you're not going to reap the full benefits uh, of it. Like, look, if you've been, look, I felt profound effects from going on testosterone, but that's because I've been lifting weights for so long that I think my androgen receptor density was through the roof. I had optimized everything at the time. I didn't realize it was because my testosterone was so low and there's a you know, whole story as to why. But when I went on, it was like, boom, because now I'm using it. Now I'm utilizing it. It was like yeah. the missing piece. Yeah. But if the, if you have missing pieces, and one of them's hormones, <clears throat> but you have all these other missing pieces, like yeah, well, I was it. I was highlighting to him. I said this is I said this is the myth around taking testosterone. People think it's like this magical hormone, and there is like so, if there is some things to about yeah. it that make it feel magical. I said, but there is this myth around it that you just take it and you're going to be like this, you know, buff monster. No. <laughs> you know, Average like, muscle <laughs> gain for a man or lean mass gain. I should say, which includes water. Average lean mass gain for a man who goes on testosterone, who had low testosterone, is between six to eight. So I think around six or seven pounds. Oh, I've never seen a research on yeah, that. Yeah, so like they'll go, they'll, they'll they'll gain about six pounds of lean body mass and lose, I think like two pounds of, of fat mass or something like that. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all you got. Now you take that person, you have them work out, and you eat good. Oh my! Now it's now like it's double or triple. Right. right that's kind of right. how I was trying to explain to yeah. him. It was like, see, what you start pairing that with training, lifting yeah. weights, and then and hitting your protein intakes. I said, and I said, and then I also reminded him too, I said, the other positive benefit, remember what I told you earlier, I said about you, instead of doing cardio lifting weights, and then if you actually, if you had like today, I said, because we were drinking beer and eating steak, I'm like, and we're probably gonna overeat a little bit. What's great is because you're on testosterone, that's probably gonna go right to building muscle for you because you, if you were lifting weights, since you're not lifting weights, yeah. These extra beer calories and steak that we're having is going to get prioritized as body fat. That's right. Because you're not sending Stored a signal to the body that it needs muscle. And he was like, oh, shit. That was all I had to say to him. That you, your beer and steak was going to go to build muscle. <laughs> I'm lifting weights I tomorrow. I can eat more <laughs> steak. <laughs> I don't know about the, uh, the yeah, beer. The beer like, yeah. builds fuel. Yeah. Does beer build muscle? Do you guys know back in the day, 
uh, it was healthier to drink beer than it was to drink water. Do you guys know this? Yeah, bro. During medieval I've, times. I've talked about because this. Because of yeah, shitty water? Yeah, yeah. Because, exactly. Everybody's getting dysentery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's like, better it's to like, drink beer. Yeah. Hey, speaking Parasites. of back, speaking of back in the day, we talked about this off air. I want Doug to look this up. Doug, look up Whipping Boy, the origins. Okay, so I, I'm almost positive, not 100%, that this is the story. It would be, it's crazy if I'm right, that when there was royalty, there were children who were royalty, and when they fucked up, they didn't get punished. It was a kid that was their job was to get punished for them. Okay, so we're so let's <laughs> say so let's say you're the you're the king. I'm your son. Okay, I'm I'm the prince. You're, you're the prince. So, this is the whipping boy, Justin. Okay? We hire. Yeah. We, so I sure I fuck up boy. and I I we get we get Justin and we I beat, let the yeah. dog out and yeah. the dog ran away or something like that. Yeah. I'm in big ass trouble. I have to sit down and watch you whip. Yeah, yeah you watch him. Give me the word, his, king. Just yeah. Give me the word. You watch him get his ass beat. So wait, it's kind of a, a punishment, but I also I was the one doing the ass yeah. beating. Okay. Now I think part of it was you tried to make you like friends. fear, like fear. Yeah. I would think no. I think it would be a strategy to strike fear in me that I'm watching this kid get beat. Yeah. Because uh, unless of my, you're like a, uh, let's say like a messed up like Caligula. Well, like or twisted. I'm sure there's like this arc, right? Like when I'm really young, I see another kid get whipped. That probably scares eventually you're like you. yes, yeah. terrifies you. But then you get to be like a teenager, you're like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is just gonna so, create. What's that that. Uh, King in um, Game of Thrones, the one like the shitty, the little kid. shitty boy, yeah. Joffrey, or Joffrey. Yeah, yeah. You, he's gonna create a bunch of Joffreys. Yeah, they, I They're think like, they yeah, modeled him feed after. Off of it. I want to say Caligula. Didn't they model him after that? Probably wasn't Caligula the one who? I don't know the history of his that. mom killed her husband, poisoned him with mushrooms, so that her son, who I believe was Caligula, I think I'm not, I'm probably wrong, could be the emperor. And then Caligula eventually killed his mom. Because whatever slept with his sister was just a, set Rome on fire. Isn't that yeah, the story? Set okay. Rome on fire. Now that the, you're saying that, yeah. Is it, so, Doug, that. did you confirm? Yeah, that's correct. So, what they do is they have a young boy, for example, Prince, and then there's a young boy that would take the whipping. Uh, uh, you're absolutely correct. In, this in, is early in Europe. Replacement of them. Yeah. So, okay. Oh, so I'm, okay, up. now where? So. I thought they hired a little kid. This, you know, for I mean, people- is it all bad though? Like, was I? Did you? <laughs> yes. like, like, hear me out here. Okay. Is this is all out. bad. Hear me out. Yeah, <laughs> think back. Okay, back then the disparity between the wealthy and rich versus the poor was like you. Know, you think it's oh, crazy yeah. today? It was crazy. Oh no, then, no, right? no. Okay, so I come from a family. Okay, and like my family at that time, I'm like the fucking. We're eating on the streets. We're fucking. Yeah. We're poor, poor. Yeah. You scoop me up. Okay. Mm -hmm. you, you scoop hey, your job is to get whipped. That's right. My job is to get whipped. But I now live in the castle. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I get three meals a day. Yeah. So and my understanding, so the boy was actually educated alongside. See, and you educate me? And yeah. I just got to get ass beaten when my friend fucks up? Uh, yeah, I guess in the context of, yeah, of course. It's not so bad. Look, we always do this, right? We wow. judge the past by, based off of the standards of today. Yeah. yeah, if you do that, sure. But still, it's fucked up. <laughs> it's super <laughs> fucked up. still messed up. I mean, it's fucked up no matter what. You imagine you're in class, teacher walks but over. I mean, I mean, you, I mean yes. if, but if you look even further out, what do you think war is? What? What do you mean? Because the king's Is sending a, everybody out to, yeah. to do their bidding and die on oh, half okay, of your yeah. name. Okay, and you know, it's the same the, the thing, line like line yeah. in, in you know, on a bigger scale. No, but does it? Okay, just think, just process that for a minute. Yep. If you if you were that, like I, I don't know, bro. I would take you it. You want to be the whipping boy? Yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. Sign me up. Yeah, I'm I on the I'm on the street, fucking yeah. eating out of trash cans and whatever, and yeah. like rough life. Mm. And it's like I got to take an ass beating once a week, maybe. Bro, yeah. you know what's funny is that people take fucking for granted. Give it to me. People take yeah. for granted so much of I'll how far how that. far we've come. They think that it's natural for people to have rights to for everybody to be treated a particular way. That this is not natural. What no, is natural is how never we live. Been the case. From the whipping boy deemed it an honor to take a beating for him. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Adam was right. So basically, the whipping boy got to do everything the royal prince got to do. Fucking a. Sign me yeah, up. Yeah, but bro. what if you're? What if the? <laughs> what if the Come prince was a, was bro, a piece got, of shit? I got bait for free. Plus, you know yeah, yeah. I got. I got Think about how tough free. that kid's gonna be. Dude. I was poor and got <laughs> beat, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Are you kidding me? You got beat like, in your report. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's way worse. That's way worse. You didn't get a deal. You're yeah, just sad, bro. Wow. You get to play with the prince. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Get I the mean, fuck out of here. Sign know. me Adam's the fuck up. Adam's making a pretty good argument. Sign me up wow, for that. Wow, that's, that's, that's you know? a bad point. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you got beat and you report. <laughs> yeah, bro. And you still got beat for random shit. <laughs> dude, dude, yes. Oh, I did get a pony, though. So you can wear some gold He did get a pony, though. No, it wasn't mine, Doug. Oh, yeah, my parents. <laughs> yeah, no electricity yeah. though, Doug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they had horses. <laughs> you said no. I can't. Over. I don't even like saying I was poor anymore because I already feel like Sal was definitely more broke than I was. We just we were we were irresponsible with money. So, <laughs> but I definitely <laughs> got whipped. You know what I'm I got whipped. I we got, were irresponsible with money. I got and whipped. And in, in today's time, if yeah. I could sign up Dude. to hang out with the the billionaire's son, and I just gotta take his ass whoopings yeah. every once in a while, yeah. but get to do all the things with him, like. 
Come yeah. on. I, when I Come on. take the pictures at the back of the yacht, you know. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. yeah. Then they, they slip. Oh, yeah. great. Make me you know, tough, go in the bro. dungeon. Adam's got a selfie with the prince, but he yeah. has a black eye. And he's happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> big, hey, big ass grin on my face, though. <laughs> big ass grin. Yeah, oh, yeah. That, that prince loves Hanging you. Hanging out on our yacht in Dubai. You know what I'm saying? Dude, I was telling, when I tell Jessica stories when I was a kid, sometimes you ever hear like words come out of your mouth? You're like, oh, yeah, that was kind of fucked up. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah. If I woke up my mom too early because I'd go in and take a shower, she'd throw her shoe at me. And you know, I'd laugh about it. Jessica's like, Jessica, stop me. She goes, she threw a shoe at you. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. And she's like, wait a minute, a shoe. She picked up a shoe and would throw it at you. I was yeah. Like, oh yeah, that's kind of fucked yeah. up. That's been my whole relationship with Katrina, telling her childhood story. She's like, you know, that's not normal. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess I never really thought yeah, about that. Whoa. Uh, I was like, wait a minute. A shoe? Isn't that wild though? Like that because that that's your world. That is normal. You think it's normal? Yeah. That yeah. is. I mean, that it, like it, I would never throw a shoe at my kid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I would never throw a shoe. And I'm like, I would be like, what am I doing? You know? Yeah, yeah. Happen yeah. all the time. Yeah. Used to happen all the time. Stab yeah. them with And the aim nails. was just, yeah. let me tell you, that shit yeah. would come around the Hey, corner. speaking of your family, I saw things, news in Italy uh, that, like, like <laughs> that, that stuff is- I represent Italy. <laughs> so, yeah, you do. You represent <laughs> <laughs> Okay, go ahead. It's uh, a bunch of like uh, sinkholes, like uh, cities like falling in. Did what? You yeah, look. I don't know that. Yeah, this like brand new. Hold news. on, I'm going to defer to Justin. Is this the sign of the end times again? Oh, it's getting. Can you close. look it up for me? Once it's in yes. the Middle East, that's where I oh, get nervous. Shit. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Hey, why he's, looking this, yeah. why, why he's looking this up? Let me see. Why he's looking this up? Change the screen, Doug. I want to look. Yeah, I'm going to pull this up here. I saw. You know, you were talking about your picture of your four buddies and stuff on the scooters. Oh, bro, can I say something? I, yeah. I, I, yes. I realize now why you take the fat joke so well because you grew up being the skinny kid, bro. Yeah, you why? were literally like the skinny kid, bro. I you, you look tiny. I know you, you look tiny. Don't Nicholas. make you guys look tiny. Yeah, I know. Oh, I, I mean, know. hey, hold yeah. on a second. I know it's okay. bro. I was always here. Okay, because my dad here. Here, I think I was talking to Ed about this too. My friend, he's the biggest guy, right? He's yeah. like, oh, bro, that guy was a fucking mountain in college. Holy shit, dude. Okay, so he came from Western Michigan, and he was like, you know, a top rated player and like he came to our school and like i was like roomed with him my whole job was to get him into the weight room because like that fucking guy i love him to death but he's one of the laziest dudes on the planet <laughs> I you know love why? you, Ed, he's so big but you and know it. It's true. I bet he was gifted. so gifted, bro. He so gifted. Just... Okay, so here's the thing. Like, like was he strong as shit or he, what? Like, uh, unbelievably strong. Like, you've never even met somebody this strong that doesn't use it, right? So you go to, like, try to tackle him or, or like, so he was a, he was an offensive lineman. All he had to do was, like, stick out his arm like this, and it was like nobody would ever even – he would knock people just flat on their back just wow. by this, like effortless. And so he did that to me one time in practice. And I'm like, you know, blitzing through one of the holes and he just did this. And I just felt like a little toddler, Wow, you know, and he, I've seen him hold people up like uh, over, like uh, we were, we were at this party, he held this guy over the railing just to teach him a lesson. And the guy was like, literally thought he was going to die. And just like, ah, I was like, hey, 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 calm down. He like put him back down Jeez. gently. He was massive. How strong was he in the gym? Was he just hitting crazy numbers? You know, he never even tried, dude. But like he could just, you could just stack plates on it forever and he'd, he'd be fine. That's like my co my my cousin Andy, who you guys know. Yeah, he's a moose too. Bro, he was, he met me at the gym the other day at Gold's the other day. Oh, and, yeah. I love this. This is great. And he, this we were just, we were lifting weights, dude. This dude, he comes <laughs> Just as Adam's been working out for his whole life. Bro. <laughs> and he lifts, he, uh, we, we were, I was deadlifting, right? And yeah. he's like, he, and he has terrible form. He's know how to do it at all and he just comes yeah. over and just like how do i do this and he's just like lifts it picks, yeah picks up 315 like all like no problem and i'm just like dude you're so you're like, I dude you. i just retire yeah you know i'm done he's like put more on there i'm like no dude your form is terrible we have to get good mechanics he's like why it's too easy i can't even feel it <laughs> 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 fucking hate you dude oh, that's like, hilarious serious just a moose oh you yeah know? so i mean i my whole childhood my dad was six seven and he was a monster yeah. like and he's he's definitely shrunk over the years and like he's you know like his his spine everything's kind of like you know rounded him forward but like my, i idolized him you know and he's like this huge monster and so it's like i've just i've always kind of gravitated towards like you know big kind of dudes you're, you're like attracted that. to big guys. i'm just real attracted to <laughs> big bears it's like hug me you know? yeah hey Doug, hey, so what is it? A bunch of sinkholes. What do we mean? Bunch of sinkholes. This is like over a lot of these are a couple years old. Uh, but yeah, there's been sinkholes in Naples no, this stuff was and like Rome. Like literally, like like today, I was uh -oh. reading. really something. Yeah, yeah, I was reading on. I think it was CNN end of times. I'm telling you, 
I, I saw I, it's one of those I saw, and then there was other ones were like the, in the city and stuff that were the houses were wow. falling. In. Look, just Doug, if you I tap, just thought if you for click sure you news, would know with your family. I thought you you get phone no, no. Did they have did they have like a crazy uh, rainstorm like o over the winter or something? No that, idea. Like loosen the soil, or is it, this is just like no idea. Some, I feel like this is one like of those pockets. like viral things. Maybe you click on and then they try to make it sensationalized. <laughs> uh, I mean, he just clicked on news. That's all okay. there is. Yeah, there's nothing right. super recent, so oh. I don't know why it's not showing up here. Huh. Because remember saw, in Utah, they had that one like whole complex that. Oh, fell. I know that Brooke was talking about. Yes, yeah. the, I saw the cliff. I saw a clip. <clears throat> this guy was on a lake. I don't know. Look, it was like a lake, and he was sitting there, and the, there was trees along the bank, and all of a sudden the trees started moving, and they all fucking sank, and then the lake started going into the hole, and he's hitting the gas on the boat to try to get out. Oh, that's my God. terrifying. That was wow, scary. that's Shit. terrifying. Bro. Yeah, you can't do nothing. About I think that. drowning is got it. I know they say it's euphoric, like if you drown, die that way. That, but that's like a scary way for me. Yeah. I think. How do they know that? By the way, uh, they How come back. They Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Would you rather burn or drown? Drown. I'm not gonna burn. Are you kidding me? Well, because feel... the fact that I know that the, it's supposed to feel euphoric, I would rather drown. No, know? I think when you it's burn, excruciating, it dude. only hurts for a real short period of time. Then no, all your I don't think that's are gone. true at all. Yeah, uh, yeah you no, think, I really? think you just. <laughs> I think you suffocate first, right? Isn't There's got right? you got. Yeah, I don't uh, know, bro. There's got to be. A, I think that's the worst way to go. Well, so burning. here's what I feel like with the drowning. Why it would be so terrifying? You're in the water. You're going under. So you're gonna hold your breath as long as you can, and you know and then at you some go to point get it, and then you you know at some point uh, you can't hold your breath, and you have to suck water in. Oh, I mean that's. That's rough. Yeah, that's a scary. It's rough, yeah. Justin. Yeah, but there's whatever that period of time you're talking about burning though. There's like a period of time where that shit really hurts. Yeah, yeah. There's it's not like a it like with drowning you never there's never gonna be any pain. Yeah. It's literally more fear. This more is a mental. terrible conversation, but we were like actually even <laughs> yeah, talking tell me about it. <laughs> we were sorry, talking sorry, about Doug. being exposed to like things like Faces of Death growing up. And, like, oh my god! And everybody passed. Did you guys watch that? Passed this DVD to their friends. It came from like the you know their older brothers, and then it was passed around and passed down. I'm what like, was it? Why was you this such a that? phenomenon? You oh, never watched that? What's it, what was it called? Faces of Death. Faces of Death. No, I can't watch stuff like that. Okay, yeah, so do you watch. remember it? No, I, I think it's, I've heard of it. Okay, but I, so when we were kids, for people, no, we didn't have the internet, right? So there was a DVD, or for, it was VHS when I saw it, I think. Yeah, I think it was VHS. And it was called Faces of Death, and it was clips of people, of like horrible things. Yeah. I saw uh, 30 seconds of it and got traumatized and walked out the room. <laughs> yeah. It, it, bro, it's bad. I watched yeah, I like watch four it, of them. You see a guy, I got like, hit, hit by a train, yeah. and I left. I'm yeah. like, I'm not watching this. Yeah. And it just makes me think of like the internet in, in general, in terms of like, if you're a curious teenager, you get, you get through that, like what they're like searching, like nobody knows about, you oh, know, so and then there's a whole underground I'll, thing. I'll tell you right now. So my older son told me that there was a website that he, he watched, he looked at when he was like 13, thanks kid or dad, I guess I did a shitty job <laughs> that you start at the top. And it starts with like nice pictures and you keep scrolling down. And the more you scroll down, the more disturbing it gets. And the goal is to see how far you can, get? You can keep scrolling what? down. What? And it oh, shows wow. worse and worse stuff the more you scroll down. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And he was telling me about it. I'm like, wow, you shit. So I guess I shouldn't have let you sit in your room on your computer. Uh, uh, anybody Yikes. hear about the news <clears throat> also today I, about uh, Facebook? Their um, $1 billion lawsuit? For what? The, the privacy. So wow. yeah, that's, wait, who's suing them? I don't know who's. I don't. Is know. it the EU? Uh, I think so. Actually, I yeah. think it is. The EU. Yeah, the EU has yeah, been going is. after these companies. Yeah, I think, and I, I don't know if they. I, I don't know if they officially won, and that's what the news is, or Oof. what that. But it was like a billion that's a dollar massive hit. Yeah, that's like bankrupt somebody. Like, yeah, but will they pay it, or or do they have to? I mean, maybe. Well, that's why I wanted to ask you, like, when what happens when someone like, a company gets sued for a billion dollars by like the EU? Like, I mean. Well, they either cease business or the EU punishes them by shutting them I down. I am. Uh, so it says here, anyone in the U.S. who used Facebook in the last 16 years can now collect a piece of a $725 million settlement by Meta. So they did a settlement. So this is a U.S.-based thing. And it's oh. a settlement for Now, hold on a second. What do we all get? $2? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And the attorneys make a killing. Yeah. So we'll make like... Make like two bucks. We should all claim. Our That's the see, thing with all those class action follow, lawsuits. Do you guys follow Sean Whalen? Do you know who that is? The, the he's like yeah, a, he's the uh, lions not sheep. Yeah, guy. yeah, lions yeah, not yeah, sheep yeah, guy. Yeah. Did you see he he had a big lawsuit that that he lost? No, oh, yeah. wait, you, were, you were telling me because somebody was trying to say that he uh, manufactured everything overseas. Right? Yeah, so like he he went through this process where he was like saying that like all his stuff was made in the U.S. and it was like there was a, a period of time where like some of the clothes he was getting was still from like from China or whatever like that, mm -hmm. and then like what everybody does prints on the shirts, whatever. It sounded like it, it was a bullshit like 
small transitional period for him that like it was he still had inventory that was coming from here he had made the yeah. transition here and that's when he had, whatever like so anyways he got slapped with like i think two hundred fifty thousand dollars or whatever and so everybody who had bought one of those shirts got a a, a 15 dollar check mailed to them really because of that yeah mm. <clears throat> i thought that was interesting that he got hit like that i the best lawsuit that i ever had money from hmm. And you got money from them too. Was Twenty Four Fitness? Did you ever get money from them? Oh, I did. Yeah, I got a big chunk. I got a good chunk of change. How much you get? Fifteen or seventeen? So did I. Yeah. You know what? Under twenty, but it was more than ten. Like eight. Yeah. You know why I got? That was later on. You know why I got so much money though? Because I worked a fraction of the time you worked there. I was only there a couple years. It was all overtime, right? That was yeah. We used to sign. That I remember. Okay, I remember being taught by my boss. Like I'd ask him, like, well, how do I? We take a break for 15 minutes here. He's like, listen, just when you get to work, put in. And then when you leave, you put so, out. And so we would so just. So here was the lawsuit for people who don't know, right? <laughs> yeah, we just is, hang out forever. There's you're a salaried employee, but you did non-salaried work and you didn't get paid for it. This but you had lawsuit. to log your hours. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what you used to do is you would log your hours. Now, here's where people fucked up. Because I had friends that worked with me who they put. Nine to five, nine to five, right? Just because you fill it out. They just yeah. want you to fill out no, your time I put what time I came, getting, what time I left. That's what I did. I'm like, I'm being honest. I got here at eight and exactly. I left at 10. So I put eight to 10, six days a week. I was only there for a couple of years, but those hours added up. Yeah. And later on, I left the company, everything. I'm doing my own thing. <clears throat> I got a check in the mail. I think it was like 17 G's. Yeah, I got like three checks from them for that, wow. that those lawsuits. That was like a... I that that nice time, nice time. surprise money. Yeah, it was. That was a huge come up for me at that time. Yeah, I, remember feeling, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, it was like, a, it was not because Unexpected I was- Yeah, and I had left, left the company by that time. And of course, I had kind of a sour taste in my mouth the way that ended. And I was like, okay, this is, <laughs> eases know. the pain a little bit. <laughs> I was happy that I was honest. You know? yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no. no, I'm like, I, that's why I'm so, uh, you know, cautious about us. Like, I remember when we were first starting to scale and, and add employees, I remember telling Katrina, I'm like, hey, you can't, you can't be telling our staff to do this or telling our staff to do that. Like you, th that shit will come back and bite yep, you in the ass. Yep. Like you can't, that's not, they have, they have to be able they have to have a break every four hours. You have to do this. Like, I know we have this really cool like environment that we have, mm -hmm. but that's how it starts. That's how, what happened in 24. It was like such a laid back environment. Mm -hmm. Nobody really cares. It's like, Oh, just write down whatever you are yeah. here. Like, you know saying? Meanwhile, your boss was telling you like, Hey, you're under goal. You work Saturday. You yep. know what I'm saying? Didn't matter that you had fucking 70 hours. You already oh, logged. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, the weekends, weekends were just, you had to get like everything done. Yeah, yeah. Bro, I was, I did seven days a week, uh, eight or 9 AM to nine or 10 PM. And I did that for almost a year straight, almost an entire year, every single day, year yeah. after year. And that was a lot of speed stacks involved. <laughs> Lots of <laughs> speed stacks. Like some sleeping at the gym. Well, yeah. You, you, know, you know what? what One I, less adrenal <laughs> gland. Yeah, yeah, for Justin. Yeah. I, you got, it's interesting. I, I think about this a lot because obviously I did it the longest uh, working for them. And I had my son afterwards. And I can't imagine what it would have been like, obviously, because I've been blessed to be able to have the relationship yeah. with him now. But I'm like... Man, I, you, I guess you don't really think about that as a non-father. Like, this never crossed my mind that, like, I oh, shit, if I have honest. a job that I work till 8 p.m. at night, like, and then I also have a child, like, I'm going to miss, like... I did. Most of his life. I did. Like, I not even really thinking about By it. By the way, I took that mentality with me when I uh, went <clears throat> and worked for... You know, because I started my uh, working for myself at 23, and uh, that mentality is what I continued with. And I'm so young, you know, and you're just working, you know, and you think that's your value. I did, bro. I didn't know my kids. I didn't know my kids till after I, when I, when I got divorced and I, I was like, okay, I got to really make sure I qual have quality time. It was like this wake up call. And then I was like, holy shit, I don't know. I don't even know my own kids because mm -hmm. that's how you get to know them is you make their lunches, you take them to school. You, you know, you did you know? Okay. I'm mm -hmm. curious. Cause uh, did you feel that way? Like, cause I, yeah. you, you guys all have, you guys both have such great relationships with your, your kids that for me, an outsider looking in, I, I feel like when I see a dad who is disconnected from his kids, it's very obvious to me. So I don't feel like you guys had that. I don't feel like you guys like, I, don't I felt, I, you don't know it when you're in it, dude. Like I was like, well, I play with my kids. I love them. I hug them and kiss them. I'm home every night. Um, we go on vacations or we do trips, but you, you, you just don't realize it because you're in the mindset of this is my value. I need to work. I need to make money. This is what I do. And men have this, um, this ability to compartmentalize and disconnect. Mm -hmm. It's just, we have it and we can do it and it, and it can sometimes be valuable. Sometimes, oftentimes it's abused where we're like, this is what I do. Laser focus. Yeah. Turn everything off. Got to get deal. the family out of the hole. Yeah. That was like, I was went through a period of that too. Did so. you feel that? Like, did you ever go through that with feeling that way with the boys and stuff like that? Or yeah, they, they were very young. Um, but yeah, I would definitely like the first few years. It was like 
I mean, I, I was around, but I wasn't because I was always thinking about like how I was going to get us out of like our situation or like, um, you know, be able to, to get enough. So like we, we could, because we were two ships in the night too, Courtney was working on top. So we didn't have like insurance if she wasn't working, right. you know, uh, as a nurse. And so it was like this, it was like, I would spend the time with the kids would she would work. And then it was like vice versa. So it was like, I did kind of have that, but uh, I was so not focused on being present at all. It was just like everything I could do to get out of my current situation so, uh, for a couple of years. Was there a moment then when you felt like you, like how he says, how Sal says when um, he got divorced and then he like had to do all those things. Like that was a big period for him to like, like, did you have a, a time where it was like, oh shit, now I'm really connected to my kids where I, I don't think I was before as well. Yeah, it was, um, I think it was when we started doing the podcast it was around that time because um, before that it was, it was getting Courtney uh, to stay home longer for Everett. So when he was born, I was like, you're staying home. Like you're staying home for the whole first year. Like, I don't care. I'm going to put everything on my back and we're going to make this happen. You're not working, mm -hmm. you know? And so that happened. And then it was like, okay, the first six months of like, you know, she had her um, pay and all that for, for being off and uh, maternity leave or whatever. And, uh, and then that ran out and then I was like, Oh shit. So then I had to like create and as being an entrepreneur, you have to create another opportunity in that. And so I'm like, okay, I created a boot camp, and now I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing some, I'm, I'm slinging supplements with some guy I hate, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just to like, get like extra Jeez. income in. And then like, I'm also running and, and booking as many appointments as I possibly can. And like, uh, and then I get home and I'm fried, but I'm also like, trying to like, Hey, remember yeah. dad, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the, yeah, I, it was right after that where like, uh, I started making more money. I started having like a little more space. Uh, and then we started working on this and I was like, um, I was, I just had this, this switch is like, I just got to focus more on, um, you know, playing with my kids and like being outside my kids and like taking time to like, you know, vest in them and build. And like, I started yeah. playing Legos with them. And like, it was like, we started bonding a lot more for sure. Like, yeah. but I was like, so spinning in the, in the chaos of yeah. like, you know, the day to day pay. So yeah. Dude, yeah, cause I, I really only know you guys as that. So, but so, but it sounds like it's actually around the same time for both of you then. So probably. a lot about when, when mind pump really started mm -hmm. to take off, you guys were able Bro, to, Bro, you might've, you might've fallen into the same trap. Had we, I jumped on board with the f work every day bell to bell. Remember when it was a struggle for oh, you? Oh, yeah, yeah, no. Absolutely. Had we all done that, I think we all, you would have probably jumped. Yeah, that's and what I you think, knew too. Yeah. You know, that was your button too, right? Well, because yeah. too, and I think uh, that when it was, we started it, like your my mentality towards that shifted. Minded. And, and I was like, I agree. Like I had that same kind of energy coming in. I was like, I don't want to like just stay here all day till like 10. Like I normally would do that same thing. Yeah. I like just yeah, grind, 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 grind. I know you do. Aren't you happy? <laughs> yeah, like, then you're, <laughs> look how much you learn. We influenced you on that for sure. Yeah. But no, hey, like, no, yeah. hey man, I tell you what though, you know, what's hard now for me is I feel guilty because I have a relationship with my little ones that I never had with my older ones. Oh, I bet. I, bet. I play with my daughter and, you know, my, my infant and I change her diaper. And sometimes I do the nights with her yeah. and with Aurelius, he's, you know, he's a toddler and I do things. And I never did that with my older kids. You know I, what, get, though, I feel guilty. So you feel guilty like that, but I don't, at least I don't see it in their behavior. Do you, do you think they feel that or have resentment? All they you? know is what they know. Right. And they know they've known me now for, I mean, it's been, it's been good you know, eight years of me being way more present right. and connected. So, so I feel like they probably don't even remember dad. Didn't they do don't this. know what they, they missed. Like, I don't feel like yeah. they, they go like, Oh, they see you with your, your, your girl. No. And they're like, he never did that with no, me. No, 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 no. They that, were so little, you know, No, they don't feel that. They, they don't. They don't. So it's really your own that. shit, your own it is, deal. That you, and you know what? I'm going to tell you something right yeah. now. I know this too. Now yeah. I'm, now I'm going to take it like an out, like a big like view of things. As a parent, you're always going to look back and you're always going to be like, I could have done that better. That's just, I don't care oh, who yeah, you are. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, matter. I don't care who you are, how great yeah. you are. You're always going to look back and be like, fuck, I could have done that better. <laughs> Why did I do that? So yeah. I know that that's just part of being a parent that cares. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, so that's, anyway. just, that's the case. Hey, that's the, the thing, right? Hey, I want to say something real quick that uh, I'm very proud of. Caldera continues to use our clips. More for their product. I've seen yeah, yeah. That, yeah. I know I'm going to, you know, taking a left here. We're supposed to talk about Caldera. And I love the fact that they use our clips <clears throat> because it just makes me feel good about the fact that we um, can communicate their product. Well, I'm waiting for you all to get on the board with the soap. I know, Doug, you've now tried the soap, right? You said it's the best lather of all time. Ever. Absolutely. So yeah. is it like nitro? Like we were just talking about nitro. Is it like kind those of kind like of bubbles? That, yeah. yeah. 
Wow. It so okay, you know how like nitro like soap. your your standard bar of soap or like we, I mean we So it's not big bubbles, like, it's like little tiny lots of like wonderful It's it foams up. It's it's a trip how much it foams up. Like you compare it to a regular bar of soap or sometimes especially like all natural soaps, you got to like really like scrub on it to get any yeah. sort of lather. Um you I like literally and it's like Wow. Yeah, I just I love it. I really do like it. And I know that's like a Well, I use their a silly thing to like it, but there's something which is why, of course, they you know toothpaste does it, why soap does yeah. it, why shampoo does it. There is something about that feeling that you get when you are you know washing your hair or washing your body of the lathering up mm. that just makes me feel. Yeah, what clear. is it when like bubbles pop off your skin and it's a weird sensation? I don't, I don't know. know. Like, I don't there's even, something. To I don't that. even know if I noticed that. You don't? No. Are they pop off your skin? Well, yeah. Well, that's what it's doing. It's fizzing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a shampoo. Remember those shampoos that that tingled your scalp? Feel oh, the tingle. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's just head menthol. and shoulders or whatever. Yeah, they just put menthol in there. <laughs> I, so the Caldera serum is what I use regularly. That's it. That's the only thing I use. So, but that I use it every single day regularly, and there's nothing that comes close to to, uh, to that for for, yeah, no. for my face or whatever. No, I, I, yeah. I love their. Product. All right, so we got a shout out. I want to give a shout out. We've never done this before, but I'm going to shout out somebody in our forum. Hey, I'm going to show you guys. We don't ever post before and after. Now, here's why we don't post before and after. I saw this because yes. I didn't see this. Okay. I'm going to send it to Doug so we can put it up on the, on the TV. It's pretty damn impressive. We don't post before and afters because this just feeds the whole like, you know, body getting image. shaped fast, body, body, body image stuff. Yeah. Body obsession type stuff. Yeah. And we have lots of these. We have lots of these. Okay. But this one was so remarkable. It's a young dude and uh, Jesse Conrad in our forum. This is his before and after from following Maps Anabolic Advanced. This is freaking remarkable. It? Doug, I just texted it to you. Yeah, yeah I'm pulling it up. If you could pull it's up. an image, so I have to paste it in here. Bro, look at this. Oh, shit. Look at the oh, difference. Shit. What's the time frame on this? Bro, March 27th till now. That's it? Yeah. Shut up. Wow. Yeah. The he time says, frame? was a bit skeptical with Maps Anabolic Advanced. And then he says, March 27th is the first picture and the second Dude. one is today. Beast. And then, bro, look at the before and after in that. Wow. Now, I know the program is ama is effective, but he's also probably got some great genetics. Is that is not, I wouldn't say that's normal results. That's, no, that's pretty insane. No, that's not normal. He looks that's like he got shredded and built like a bunch of muscle at the same time. Right. He didn't post any stats, so I don't know how much muscle he gained, but that's a pretty crazy. How uh, young is he? He looks pretty young, right? He's yeah. got to be like in his early 20s is what I would guess. Yeah. yeah. So, wow. Yeah, wow. there you go. So he got, a, he got a shout out on the show, Jesse. Boom. Good job. Thanks that's for posting. Good work, that. man. Hey, check this out. Organifi is a company that makes organic supplements to help your performance, help you build muscle, burn body fat, and improve your health. One of my favorite products is Peak Power. This is an energy-producing supplement. I use it as a pre-workout. That's all natural. I get good, even, clean, strong energy. It's euphoric feeling, and it lasts a long time. Great product, but they have many other things. Go check them out. Go to Organifi.com, that's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump and get 20% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Kaylee from Colorado. Hi, Kaylee. How can Hi, I help guys. you? First caller. Okay, cool. Um, big thanks for the show. Um, a little bit about me. I started my journey in like 2022 at like 254 pounds and just in... Um, a year, I dropped about 50 pounds. I was sitting at 200, um, and I started in the gym um, this January. So um, I've also recently learned I'm ADHD and hypermobile because of that. Um, so I think I'm dealing with some trainers that aren't really sure um, how to help me with this specific question. So um, I'm kind of struggling to connect with like appropriate muscle groups because of my hypermobility. Um, so any tips and pointers you guys can give, um, for that. And I guess we can start there. Yeah, no, good question. So, um, hypermobility isn't necessarily connected to an inability to connect to muscles. That's probably more, uh, related to the fact that you kind of, cause I saw in your, in your note that you've been in the gym for about four months. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. It just takes a little while to really get the skill of connecting, squeezing okay. to a muscle. Now, hypermobility is basically um, hyper flexibility without stability. So mm -hmm. are you the kind of person like without even working out, you just, you could totally fold yourself in half. You could sit in a squat, like super, super flexible. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Um, just my range of motion is like beyond a normal person's ability to okay. like, I can, I can move weight 
in a in an extended range of motion. Okay. Um, and yeah, I know it's not normal now. Okay. Okay. So this is what, so I've trained a few people with hypermobility. And so what we typically do, and I don't do this with, with most people, this is just, just this particular category mm-hmm. is I actually prevent them from doing the deepest, fullest range of motion they can do. So I, mm-hmm. I limit the range of motion so that it's a proper rep, not a full, like most people, I encourage them to do the deepest rep they can do with control with someone like mm-hmm. you. I would say, stop your rep short of as far okay. as you can go, just make it look good. And pause and, there for a second. Yeah, and then when you get stronger, rather than adding weight, add pauses to the reps. So hold okay. the weight at the bottom, squeeze the weight at the top, that kind of stuff as you start to get stronger. And then when you're holding it at the bottom, don't let, don't just sit in the bottom or just relax. You have to support it with your muscles yeah. in each okay. of those positions and hold for five seconds, six seconds, that type of deal. That'll help a lot with, with what you're talking about. Yeah. The whole goal. So yeah. And then I guess my struggle with that is, um, the classes I'm doing at my gym, they focus a lot on like getting your rep counts in, in a time frame. No, no, um, no, 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 no. That no. kind of limits yeah. my ability. I feel like to focus on a good pump. You got to oh, yeah, avo- abandon that. Yeah. Right. You got to avoid that. Uh, that's like the, the, the opposite direction. Mm-hmm. I'd want to take you. In fact, I'd want to take you another thing you can do uh, aside from what Sal was saying, where you kind of pause, you could even just slow down the tempo, like yeah. really slow, okay. like instead Increase of doing tension. Yeah. Instead of doing, let's say 15 body weight squats, let's say I might do five with you, but, but slow, hella slow. That's a, they, they take the same time. One, 15 yeah, weight. exactly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're at the bottom eight. Pause for a second. One, okay. like, like that slow, which is the opposite of what a, a class setting is going to want you to do. They're going to want to be like up tempo, right. keep you moving. And for someone like you, I would go the opposite direction. We would slow down and pause. And I care less about how many reps you're getting. I, I care more about the quality and the tempo of the rep. Yeah. I can right. see you working with bands, like for this reason of being like very slow, but increasing tension. Like, so if you do what Adam's talking about in terms of like bringing that entire tempo down to a really slow pace, holding and exaggerating that hold at the bottom. So you get like an isometric hold. So you're just, your whole goal really is control and like increasing uh, muscle recruitment and and tension. And so to be able to do that, um, you're going to build a lot more off of that. If you just do a whole block, just devoted to that uh, and then come back to to, to weights and, and see how that applies. It's going to give you a lot more control. Yeah, Kaylee, you're taking classes right now. Are you in a gym or is this just a class-based facility? I am. It's a class-based facility. Um, so it was, it's a trainer that was working for a bigger gym. He's now starting his own thing. So he's slowly bringing in more equipment, but I just um, supporting like local people that I know and trust. And, but I'm also like uh, understanding I need kind of more from the classes. I just, I'm so new to this. I don't really know yeah. what programming to do and okay. all of that. So I'm like just finding, following the shepherd at this point. Kaylee, Kaylee yeah. is hiring a trainer for one-on-one sessions, maybe once or twice a week. Is that feasible for you? I could probably work that in. There's a trainer at that gym I've connected with. Um, mm-hmm. and I threw some challenges through the gym. I've already one of one-on-one with her. So, um, I could totally try to add in I think I could afford one day a week for sure. Okay. I would do, I would do one day a week with a trainer and then one or two days a week on your own. I would not do classes. I don't, I don't think classes for, for, for someone like yourself. I mean, for most people who are just getting started, classes are terrible. They just generally are no matter how great they're run. They just, Mm -hmm. uh, it's not, it's not individualized. You end up learning bad technique and form in reality. Although classes attract beginners, the only people that might benefit from classes are people who advance, who know yeah. their bodies, know how to control things, know how to, you know, Yeah, I feel like I'm things. just at a place where I'm not kind of outgrowing what I can learn in the class. So I'm, yeah. uh-huh. yeah. Especially from you guys. Like, um, so, like, the nutrition aspect of my classes, like, was kind of garbage. It wasn't working for me. And hearing, like, you guys um, recommending reverse dieting, um, I, I was definitely under eating protein. Now, like, I'm around 2,100 calories, 150 grams of protein a day. And I'm noticing big changes in my muscle growth and stuff like that. All from you guys. So Awesome. Yeah. What do you, what do you think? Uh, symmetry? What would you like to, uh, cause yeah. this is what I'd like to do is if she can, if she can afford one day a week with a trainer, I'd love to give you a program to give to the trainer to take you through. Then in addition yeah. to that, I'd love to put you in the forum so that you can tell us as your journey with the trainer. So let us know how it's going with the feedback you're getting from them. So that combined, 
with actually getting one-on-one -on -one help, I think we could we could do a lot. Yeah, here. what I would do, Kaylee, is I'd show the trainer this right here. So when this episode airs, present it to the trainer yeah. so they can hear what we're talking about and ask okay. them if they have any, you know, if they if this is something they can do. Work with the trainer once a week, then work out once or twice a week on your own, and I would avoid the classes and you'll get you'll get better results that way. Yep. Okay, perfect. Awesome. All right. We're gonna send you map symmetry and we'll put you in the forum too, okay? Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. You got awesome. it, Kaylee. All Thank right. you. Awesome. Bye. The, the irony of classes I know. is that they attract the, the wrong exact, person. Yeah, the exact opposite yeah, yeah. Of, of anyone who, yeah. like, I could take a class and I could make it benefit me because I know my body. I yeah. know what I need to do. I don't need to listen to the instructor if they're saying yeah. to do something that's not you working for me. You get in the right I can modify sort of, it. yeah, form yeah. And, and, and posture. Yeah. Did I hear her mention when she first started talking to you? Did she say she has ADD? Is that what she said? ADHD, yeah. which yeah. leads to hypermobility. There's no connection. Yeah, okay. I don't, I don't know why she said that. Yeah. Well, you know what though? Because I have a what it does. <laughs> I'll tell you what it is connected to is people that are attracted to those classes. Oh yeah. yeah. So you get the the ADHD type people, yeah. the cortisol junkies. I mean, all the wrong people are attracted to class settings. They just really are not designed. I mean, they're not ideal for anybody. They're really not ideal for the beginner that is a cortisol junkie that can't sit still. Like. I want to take this person in the complete opposite direction. Yep, like yep. She needs to slow down everything, long rest periods. And so hopefully the trainer gets to listen to this conversation and then we'll actually take her through uh, symmetry. Yeah. I think she'll do great. And then, and then if this is yeah. a trainer listening, my recommendation is like, like lean into the slowing the reps down even further than what we recommend in the program. Yeah, look, th that's not to say there isn't any benefit from classes. I think in some cases, in many cases, it helps someone get motivated, helps them connect with There's people. Accountability in there. Yeah. And the reason why trainers start classes, just this is a hundred hundred percent full disclosure is because it's a low low barrier to enter. So it's a great way for them to get more clients uh -huh. who can pay less. And then from there, they tend to get clients in, in a one-on-one -on -one stage. But but for most, especially if you're a beginner and you have money to spend, you're better off training with a trainer once a month than you are taking classes every single week. I mean, it's just a fact. So so if you're going to spend money on, on, on anybody helping you, go with the one-on-one -on -one route, find a good trainer. Our next caller is Katya from Arizona. Hi, Katya. How can we help you? Hello, how are you guys doing? We're doing good. good. Uh, thank you for having me. It's uh, it's an honor to be here with you guys. Thank you. And uh, my question is, I guess, how to achieve the hourglass figure? Um, I know that there's not necessarily a special, like a special way for man or for woman, but I wonder if there's, uh, I guess, specific muscles that you want to work out to look, I guess, give it more of a feminine look, I guess. Great question. Okay, so um, yes, I'm, you can. Yeah, yeah I'm you, glad you asked this because you can sculpt. Yeah. Number one, uh, a symmetrical, healthy body is always what's going to look best. So let's start with that because what sometimes what people do is they they think they look at the body and they say, okay, these are the muscles I want to develop, and I don't, I want to ignore everything else. And what ends up happening is they do that, but because the body doesn't look complete to the onlooker, it just doesn't look as good. So a symmetrical, healthy body is always best. Now, that being said, I'm glad you asked about the hourless, hour, uh, hourglass figure and, and how to look feminine because a lot of women think lifting weights will produce the opposite. That's not true. By developing good, strong posture, so the muscles of the back, the shoulders, the shoulders always make the arms look really good, staying relatively lean, and developing the glutes and hamstrings, you can emphasize the hourglass look. And those are the body parts that you'll see bikini competitors tend to focus on because on stage when they're super, super lean, they still want to present a, a feminine figure. And those are the muscles that tend to do that. So I would say overall fitness and health, but then special emphasis on back. So good posture. So mid back, shoulders, glutes, and hamstrings would, would be the most important. Shoulders and ass is what I was going to say. So you build, you build your shoulders, you build your ass. Now here's the, now here's the biggest challenge to that is most of my mm -hmm. women that want to do that also are also very scared to add calories and put some weight on the scale. So you have yeah. to also be okay with that because you have you have clients that want that, but then they also want to stay in a calorie deficit so they put no weight on. Now that's what's impossible. And then you waste your time. To try and build an hourglass physique and think that we're going to do it in a calorie deficit or while we're doing hours of cardio is just not going to happen. So part of that process is being okay with putting on some cal putting on some weight. And sometimes you're going to put a little bit of body fat on along the way while you're also building muscle. Now, we can potentially 
be in this perfect sweet spot where you build mostly all muscle. But I always try and get the client to understand that you got to be okay with a little bit of body fat potentially coming on on the pursuit of building this hourglass physique. Because what I want to do is put 5, 10, 15 pounds on the scale on you and then go the other direction and diet you back down and then get rid of just the body fat and then maintain the muscle. That's And then that's what will give you this more pronounced hips, pronounced shoulders to create that kind of hourglass look. But we got to be okay with increasing calories in pursuit of doing that because if you don't increase the calories, you're just going to be burning while you lift weights and you're not going to have enough adequate nutrition to actually build the muscle yeah. on your body. In other words, you have to eat in a calorie surplus if you're going to make this happen. No workout will work without enough calories and enough protein. So that's the bottom line with this. How long have you been working out, Katya? Why are you asking this question? Are you noticing any results or you? Um, yes, I actually have been working out for about a year. Uh, just my main focus was glutes, to be honest. And um, so in order to, I guess I didn't want to put much pressure. So I figured I would just start with glutes and legs and stuff like that. But obviously now um, I would like to start looking more. I start working on my upper body a little bit more, but I was afraid of, I guess, I, I know it, maybe that doesn't make sense, but I guess to look manly or something. So um, that's why I, I wanted to ask maybe if there's a certain way to do it or, or, or in order, I guess, yeah. uh, no, to do the exercise. This is a super, this is a super common question. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's also based on a lot of myths yeah. around strength training. You, you could train like a male bodybuilder and you would never look masculine. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. The, the The women that you see uh, that look that way uh, are a combination of genetics, muscle building genetics that are so rare. It's like as rare as someone who's seven foot tall in combination with male hormones. A lot of them take male hormones uh, in order to emphasize that look. But you, you could lift like a body, like a male bodybuilder and you would never look masculine. What you would end up accomplishing is a very sculpted yeah. uh, type physique. So. Yeah, it would just show your muscles off more at that point. Like you're, it, what builds muscle builds muscle at the bottom, uh, at, you know, bottom line. So it's uh, that's, a, that's a big myth is that all of a sudden you're going to create this like boxy kind of shape uh, by doing compound lifts and things like that. But in, in fact, those are going to be your best type of exercises to, to produce muscle. I'm going to have Doug send you our MAPS aesthetic program since that was created with this intent. Like that program was created to sculpt the physique. It was inspired by what I used to do to train for a show. And I want you to pick shoulders and ass for your two muscles. So when, okay. you, so when, you, when you get this program, we give people the option to pick one or two muscle groups to focus on, to develop. And then, and then the, and then you follow the routine the way it's laid out. And so, shoulders and butt are going to be the two ones that you focus on to help create that hourglass look. But then also do that. In fact, Doug, send her also the reverse dieting guide. So we have a reverse dieting guide. So following that, increasing your calories while following that program, and you'll you'll achieve what you're looking for. Mm, right on. You got it. Thank you so. Much. No, you, you guys are amazing, so entertaining. So um, it's, it's, it's amazing what you guys are doing. So keep up the great work. Great work. Thanks, Katya. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you, when you're talking to a guy about building his glutes, do you say ass also? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. If a guy asks for that, right? Bro, guy, you guys, that bro, you got to train your ass. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I don't you, think you so. know why it sounds weird? Because <laughs> a, a guy never asked that. I've yeah. never had a man hire me and go, I want to build my ass. Never. Have you ever? No. Okay, no. that's why. Or else I I've would. Guys say I, I get, would. I, I mean, if a, if a dude, if a dude said, "Hey, I want an hourglass look," guy has Brett I want to get an hourglass yeah. look. I'd say, "Yo, bro, we gotta build them shoulders and build that ass." <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would say. But that doesn't happen. A guy just guys yeah. don't seem to care about it. I've had guys yeah. asked to build every single other muscle group on their body. You but, got no daddy dump truck. Which is interesting yeah. though, because most women would tell you they like an ass on a guy too. Of course. Yeah. So uh, our well, well developed glutes means you can move. I know whether you're a man, but or it's a woman. funny. Don't you find that kind of interesting yeah. that, especially since most guys are lifting weights to impress women, guys lift weight. If when guys are lifting it's weights, to and, yeah, it's yeah. any muscle that a girl or ever has ever complimented them on or yeah, said anything about. Right? So I know, but so if, maybe if, that, maybe that's why, because, because it's, it's uh, socially acceptable for a yeah. woman to go like, Oh, you have nice arms. Right? Yeah, so, yeah, but yeah. if not go, Hey, you nice ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but <laughs> yeah, you know, in the back of their that. head, most women are thinking that, right. Most they're talking to their girlfriends yeah. going like, dude, you see his ass. Yeah. yeah, yeah you know? that's true. So, but they, but they don't say that. So then we think, 
think that, oh, she wants Dude. arms. Oh, she wants shoulders. Oh, uh, she wants legs. But deep down, she's like, no, I want some ass. Oh, that would move the culture. It. Yeah. If they just would point that out and tell guys, yeah. like it would definitely be. So thing. for all the dudes out there, we got a butt builder mod yeah, just yeah. for you dudes yeah. too. You Help know you guys build an ass. Work on them <laughs> cheeks. Yeah. I'm glad she asked this question. That's funny that this this myth still exists, that, that, that women will lift weights and that, oh, you got to train a particular way. Otherwise, you're going to look like a dude. It's not going to happen. I promise you. There's happen. a reason why it still is is prevalent in the space because there is there is this piece that does happen. You you were probably going to start to your clothes are going to start fitting tighter, and that fucks with a lot. That fucks with both men and women. Well, that head. just confirms the bias. I think that what it is is you go on social media and you're going to see these extreme examples of women. Yeah, I know. Oh no, I don't want to look like well, that. Well, like women athletes, it's self selection, right? Yeah, like their body type does well in that specific sport. That's right. So they associate it. That's but, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, high level female athletes in most sports also don't have the genetics that makes them look like they're, you know, I just good, had, good to have I just had this I just had this conversation with my my cousin Stephanie mm -hmm. uh, up up north and uh she's like I've been training consistently, I've been eating good so that she goes out but uh, you know I'm up like 5 pounds on the scale and all my clothes are fitting tight. I'm like, "Do you look better naked today than you did 5 weeks ago?" Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. You're doing better. You're building muscle. You get we just they get they get caught up with I mean, most girls already wear their clothes pretty fitted and tight, so there's not a lot of room yeah. to add anything. And then all of a sudden, we're well, going up a size or whatever just because of the out. That's you know, right. Their muscles, it freaks. That's out. right. It, it is funny how how men and women are different. Like a guy will add a little weight on the I'm scale because like, yeah. he, he got fatter. <laughs> High you know, five. he's like, all right, I gained a little. Yeah, <laughs> it's the opposite, right? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I get it though. As for uh, you know, a woman that doesn't want to go up a pant size, totally. and then all of a sudden, you, you, her trainer tells her to do this, and then she does, and she's like, oh fuck, this is not yep. what I want. But yep. it's like. You know, you got to judge yourself off of what you look like, mm -hmm. you know, look like before you started doing that and then after. And if you can be honest with yourself and say, oh, OK, I definitely actually look better mm -hmm. then forget about the the scale and the, the gene size. Our next caller is Caleb from California. Caleb, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Um, I uh, I just was curious how um, I've been working out about a year and a half consistently now. And I'm curious how I can't look like um, Michael Hearn yet. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I'm you like know? 20 some years. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Don't worry about Hearn. No, uh, but I want to thank you guys for having me on. Um, and I want to say too, I appreciate like all of the content you guys put out about fatherhood. That's like uh, something that I love because I got a two year old and a little one on the way. And, uh, so it's encouraging to, to hear that sometimes your fitness gets thrown off and it's okay. And, you know, when you're losing sleep and you're like, man, my hormones are thrown off and, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's cool to know that you're not the only one that's like <laughs> falling behind. So I appreciate that. You got it. Thank yeah, you. Man. Man. Um, so a little bit about me, I'm, 27, 190 pounds. Um, I work construction, mainly like uh, carpentry, welding, and electrical. Um, and I'm also an actor. I've been trying to, like my goal has been to build functional strength um, for work and uh, also helps me to not get injured and stuff. Um, and then also along with that to build a good physique that's kind of versatile for different roles. Um, I've been trying to like figure out how to get my body to a really like good cut state if I need to do that for a role and stuff. So that's kind of been like my dual goals. Um, so, so where it comes to the hurdle I've run into is I ran um, anabolic and then I ran uh, aesthetic and towards the end of aesthetic, um, there's, you know, the supersets and I was doing the, uh, the supersets of squats and it's like, you know, 15, 15 reps of squats. And then you go into the, the dumbbell squats and short rest periods. And I started running into like a lot of fatigue in my quads and, and, uh, I was like, okay, well I'll just kind of take it easy. Maybe take one extra rest day and stuff and then come back to it. Um, but I think, I think I was just pushing myself too much with weight and, um, not throttling it back a little bit, uh, adjusting for the, 
you know, the change of uh, phase. And I've ended up having like, uh, like quad fatigue in both my legs for probably a couple months now and trying to do MAPS performance. It's been like a, it's weird because I, um, I'll try to do anything that's like, you know, really hitting the quads and I'll get like really painful fatigue and have to like back off. Um, so I'm like, I'm curious what, what things I can do, um, to help that. If that just like, I took actually this whole last week off of, of any workouts just to like try to give my legs a breath, like a breath. And, um, I'm still like, even when I climb ladders and stuff, I still feel the fatigue. So yeah, curious your guys thoughts. Yeah. And I also mm-hmm. noticed here that you wrote in your note that you mm-hmm. have a high, you have a lot of inflammation. You did a test with Dr. Cabral. Yes, sir. So I, I did the test probably a month ago and I've been taking the omega three okay. uh, capsules, like pretty heavy for the last month. So, okay. And, and when you're, when you take time off, let's say you take four or five days of no exercise. Uh, do you notice any differences with the fatigue? Or does it seem like it sticks around? Um, it, it tends to stick around. I think it's like, it's like if I, if I push it in an exercise, it'll get like higher, uh, as far as like pain and feeling it, but then it kind of lowers back down, but then it's just kind of, it just kind of stays there for a little bit. Um, so are you noticing anything like uh, brain fog or any loss of balance uh, or anything like that? No, uh, no, going? I wouldn't say any of that. And it's just in the lower body or is this in the upper body as well? Just my quads. Okay. So a couple of things. Yeah. Now the obvious stuff I would say is cut your, uh, you know, I didn't even ask you about your sleep. So the, the, the most obvious places I would look would be like sleep and nutrition. Yeah. But in the meantime, you cut your volume way down, like way down, like a third of what you, what you've been doing. So if it says do cut the weight way in half, that's what I would do and go lighter, but even the volume, I would go, that does cut the volume. Yeah. But I would go like, like if it says three sets or if it says three exercise, I would do one exercise or one set of each exercise until you feel like you're, you're back. So do that for however many weeks it takes until you feel like you're, you're coming back. And the reason why I'm asking these other questions is, you know, I would also, uh, you know, bring this to your, your general practitioner and have them test you for any autoimmune issue or anything else that might be popping up just in case, um, you may be having something else that's kind of underlying, um, you know, what's going on because, uh, the the fact that you take weeks off, it still seems like it's not recovering. It's mostly in the legs. I'd want to go and just double check. Hey doc, here's what's going on. Is there anything I should check out? Um, as I work on this other stuff, but how is your sleep, Caleb? You have a two-year-old and a baby on the way. Is your sleep just not great or? Um, so I get, uh, probably on average seven hours to like six and a half a night usually. Okay. Do you feel tired? Um, not too bad. I, I would say like, definitely it's coming into, so I'm up in Redding, California and coming into summer months, it stays like 110 degrees all summer and working out in that. And so that definitely starts to make me feel tired a lot. Um, when it comes to that, but, um, besides that, not too bad. All right. And, and, and what about your diet? Did you do anything to your diet or has it stayed the same this entire time? Yeah. So I've been experimenting a lot with like, um, doing carnivore. I did like a month of, uh, mm. carnivore right after aesthetic. Um, okay. and that it felt, it felt good. It felt like I was running clean. Salt. Yes. Um, I was thinking the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. You, I you, was just thinking the same exact thing before he even, before yes, he even said intake. that. Just to mess with that. Have you, have you, did you, have you used Element yet? Yeah. So I just, I just been using Element uh, recently and I love it. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. when you go carnivore or no carb, you need more sodium. And then you work outside yeah. and it's hot and you're sweating. Thing. You need more sodium. And yeah. cutting your carbs, you are going to reduce performance. I don't care what anybody says you'll notice a reduction yeah. in performance. So going carnivore, even increasing sodium, even doing anything right, you're going to notice a decrease in performance. Yeah. Okay. And I, as well, I did, I did carnivore with the exception of, um, I had fruit. Okay. So still, that was, yeah, I still, had a source still of carb, but yeah. it's still pretty, I'm pretty st- low. Yeah. It's still probably pretty okay. low. Yeah. Really, that's still really low. Yeah. But it, do you have, uh, do you have maps 15? I have maps 15. 
maps static, maps anabolic, and performance. Okay, because I think okay, you, I think maps fifteen would be a, a decent option for you too. I mean, I think first of all, I think Maps Fifteen should be our parent. We should have called it the Parent Program. I think if you're a parent, everybody yeah, should own yeah. it. That's totally you right. should just own yeah, it. If yeah. you're a parent, if you're a mom or dad, you should have Maps right. Fifteen because it's just like a solid go-to program when you know rough nights with the kids and stuff like that. I think it's a great default for most people. So, but yeah, I would uh, increase increase water, sodium, uh, do that. Back off volume or significantly reduce weight. Same difference. Yeah. Uh, potentially do Maps Fifteen for a little bit. And then I would get, okay. yeah, I would continue potentially digging deeper because it, 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 I know that's what Sal is trying to get to the bottom of. It just seems odd that you'd notice that just in your your, your lower body like that, and it's uh, this kind of quad fatiguing thing that's really interesting to me too. That's not like a a total body fatigue, or it's not like you're saying it's heart and cardio, like you're out of breath. Yeah. It's more just your quads fatiguing. That's interesting. Did you notice anything else in terms of when you went on carnivore? Because for me, it was like I realized, oh, wow, there's more stuff going on with my gut that I need to address. Um, mm. You know, if you went back to like eating more regular, if like any food stood out or like because like to, to yeah. Sal's kind of investigation thing, like really kind of diving a little bit further into your gut health. Uh, which may be yeah. contributing to some of that fatigue on some level. Yeah, I mean, definitely work with Dr. Cabral's team. They're yeah. going to help you a lot uh, with some of the stuff. Um, but I mean, yeah, the the the, the low hanging fruit is like reduce volume, increase sodium and in, in, in water. Maybe don't go so low carb, and then see how you feel. And if you're still like this is okay. weird, it's not going away. I would go and get get looked at. Make sure there's no neurological or autoimmune issue that's that's popping up. Okay. Yeah. I, I do, I am trying to figure out gut issues because, um, since I got off of carnivore, like just being super strict, I've reintroduced some foods and I've noticed like gassiness again and bloating again. I've been taking seed, um, to try to like help with that, but I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at a different cleanses. I know Dr. Brawl's got a couple different cleanses. Um, so I don't know if there's like a good gut health cleanse you would recommend. You know, like workouts, it needs to be individualized. Yeah. So like- if We'll you, consult you about all that. If you just go and you're like, oh, I have gut issues. Let me just do this. You don't know what you're hmm. you're, you're addressing you and it could make it directly. worse. You know, probiotics, if you have SIBO, can sometimes make it worse. You're just throwing more bacteria in your small intestine. Mm -hmm. and uh, you shouldn't have it. So, okay. so when it comes to treating the gut, you want to get tested and know what you're dealing with before you do anything. Cause a cleanse can either okay. mask it, it can make it worse and you're going to just keep kind of shooting in the dark. So I would work with Dr. Cabral's team and get some more specific testing to see what you're dealing with. Okay. Yeah, right. that makes sense. All right. And then again, okay. low hanging fruit, less volume, more sodium and salt, more balanced diet, work Sweet. with Dr. Cabral's team and then take it from there. Yeah. Okay. So would I, would I run maps 15 then? Yes. Yeah. The beginning to end and then and then after that what would you recommend reassess especially yeah. look at okay. back into reassess. performance or, I, mean, yeah. I mean straight up maps aesthetic is going to be too much volume for most people especially if you're working physical labor yeah and you got small kids okay uh maps aesthetic right. even in a perfect world for you probably going to be too much volume got it okay so back into performance then probably performance or anabolic, anabolic, anabolic yeah. yeah yeah one or the other okay all right okay Cool. Thank you. That that gives me some good direction. Keep you us post, keep that. us posted, Caleb. Yeah. Good luck, man. All right. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. It. Yeah. Where I was going with that is uh, when you hear this, like, oh, I take time off. It doesn't go away. It's in my legs. Only they feel heavy. You know. And if you said something like I'm losing balance or I feel like I'm not a stable, I'd be like, okay, go make sure there's some there's nothing. Yeah, going because on. Yeah. it can creep up in in those ways where hmm. like no matter what you do, you're like, what the hell's going on? I have I feel like my muscles just aren't especially in the lower body. Yeah. Um, but obviously that's like, you know, you, you'd have to go to a doctor for that. But everything else we said is like, that's the low hanging fruit. Like that's the that's where you go when you feel that way. And then if it doesn't work, yeah. then you can start to look uh, I'd deeper. be curious to see if he does apply all those things that we were talking about, like how much better he feels. I'm sure it'll, it'll at least make a bit of a dent. I really thought it was water and sodium. That's what when he was it could when, be man. when he when he was first time. That was before he said the carnivore thing. Yeah. And then I was yeah, I know the Justin, carnivore I was like, thing. I was Ooh. like, then I was like, okay, maybe for sure. But he, I mean, he says he's been using it. So, yeah, but it's just his legs. That's the part where I was like, yeah, weird. that is yeah. weird. Our next caller is Daniel from California. Daniel, what's happening? How can we help you? What's going on, guys? How you doing? Good, good. 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 
Thanks for uh, thanks for having me on. I've uh, been a fan for a few years now. Hell yeah! All right. Um, I just had a few questions or a couple to be exact. Um, I do manual labor for a living. I've uh, done. I climb trees and do tree service for a living and I logged and wildland firefighting and all that stuff. And I noticed you guys don't necessarily talk a lot about like the manual labor side of things as far as like people that do that in their activities. So one of my questions is how do you like maintain growth and fitness without like kind of depleting or overexerting yourself and i totally understand less is more i don't i don't work out really more than four days a week anyways but the job is always extremely active so just kind of curious if you guys come across any of that stuff in your career how many how many Mm -hmm. years you've been doing this uh working this way yeah oh boy uh probably about 10 years now i'm only 31 so yeah ever since i got out of college daniel in my experience this is general let me give you a general answer okay um, in my experience with people who work, uh, manual labor, who do a lot of activity just throughout the day, because that's their job strength training, the routine typically that works best is about two days a week, two days a week, full body. And you really don't need any additional activity. You're probably moving enough throughout the day and just go to the gym, full body two days a week, and you'll build muscle and strength. And then the other part of that is you got to eat enough. You got to eat enough to fuel uh, all of that. So if you're sitting at a pretty lean, light body weight for your height, um, one of the easiest ways to do that would be to add a shake in between your meals. So breakfast, shake, lunch, shake, dinner. It's just an easy way to do it. Now, the other way to do it would be to increase the size of your meals or add meals in between those uh, those meals. But in my, like I said, I've, I've worked with quite a few people uh, like yourself and I rarely ever do I see them respond well to, you know, three, four, five days a week of strength training. They always do well with like two basic full days a week because they're already moving so much. I, I couldn't yeah. agree more. And I'm looking at, I'm reading this question right now. And I see that you, you had like athletic performance type of programming, CrossFit type programming, and then bro session stuff. I, I think you just are doing too much. I think uh, Sal's oh. advice yeah. to pull back to two days a week. Because what that does too is it does two things. Not only does it give your body some time to to rest, recover, and build and grow, it also reduces the amount you're burning. So it makes it easier to hit the calorie intake that you need to hit to to grow. Also, so scaling back to to two days a week of full body routine, which may sound crazy to you, uh, may be exactly what you need to grow. How often have you done a, a stint of just pure strength training where you have like really long rest periods in between? You keep it about five reps max. Um, I think about a year and a half, two years ago, I did your guys' uh, strength program, I believe it was, the Olympic one or the weightlifting one. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of volume things. in that one. And with the work sessions and all that, our strong program. Yeah, that one. That was the one. I like that one a lot. Um but I mean, back to what Adam was saying for like my career and working out, it was, those were things I did in the past. In the past few years, I haven't done any CrossFit or like any type of bro. I've been doing a lot of kettlebell stuff the past year. Okay. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that, uh, Adriel Mays guy, the, he's like all over Instagram with the kettlebell programming. I should know. I don't know. Huh? Daniel, I'm going to, so let me just uh, illustrate this a little better. Okay. Some of the, um, when you're looking at workout routines, the best routines that were written or created for people like yourself are going to be the ones that were done in the late 1800s, early 1900s. We're talking about the bronze era of strength training. Now, why, why do I say that? Because everybody worked hard labor back then. Everybody did all those people that, you know, the Eugene Sandows and, you know, the George Hackenschmitz, all those guys also had to do a lot of physical labor. And how did they work out? Two to three days a week, full mm-hmm. body, never to failure. They trained like they were practicing skills and they got very muscular and very strong. Because your activity is so high, you know, you, your routine is not going to look like a fit office worker routine who sits down most of the time. But then in order for them to have really good fitness, they got to work out about four or five days a week. Someone like you, two two days a week, three days a week max, 
is going to give you That's the best it. results. Anything more than that, and you can tolerate it. You probably can tolerate a lot, but it's not right. going to necessarily build muscle and strength. Like I, literally a two day yeah. a week full, like yep. MAPS anabolic. Yes. Two, two day a week option. You follow. Yep. Give me eight weeks yeah. of that. You Day's follow one. anabolic for for eight weeks consistently, two day a week routine, and it'll blow your mind. I promise you. I just guarantee. You, just from the way you're talking about what you've done in the past, the type of job that you have, scaling to two days a week, following that program as it's laid out. Don't do more because you know you can do more. Yeah. Do what it says right. and trust us, and you'll come back in eight weeks. And I swear to God, you'll thank me, Daniel. Mm -hmm. If your workouts make your job harder. In other mm -hmm. words, and I'm sure you've experienced this, you work out hard and you're like, oh man, tomorrow's gonna be tough. And then you're at work and you're sore and you're trying to do your job and it sucks because you just, your workout beat you up. Way too much, yeah. way too much. Your workouts, yes, if, if this is how, this is a good gauge for you, okay? Your workouts should make your work easier. So if, if, sure. if, they, if they make your work harder, it's too much. If you go to work and you start to feel better at work, you're doing the right amount. So don't try to do the most you could tolerate do the do the right amount that's going to produce these these results that you're looking for, which is building muscle. So I would I would scale you back, like I said, two days a week, maps anabolic. Follow it as it's written. Watch what happens. I think you're going to be blown away. Yeah, I see. On the you have another part of your question where you say too, why am I always hungry? And this is why you're just yeah, you're, you're just dude. moving and burning, and you're not give your body you wants more. It wants more rest, recovery, right. and nutrition. Uh -huh. Yep, and, which is definitely hard to do. And I, I mean, I try <laughs> to maintain, and I, I'm pretty frequent at hitting. 3,000 to 3,500 calories a day with the adequate protein intake and, and everything else I can think of. Um, so I don't know if there's, I have no idea how much I'm burning because it'd be yeah. kind of hard to figure that out. So how many days a week are you may, working may out right now? Enough calories. Yeah. Four days. You said you're going four days of the gym right now. Uh, well, no, we, so we have our own home gym. Um, and I just do kettlebells and barbell stuff. And we have like a skier and a, a rower that I'd mainly just use to warm up on. Yeah. I like to do, um, I don't really like do cardio workouts. Yeah. No, buddy, you, yeah. Go, you go in there and you do like, uh, like, like maps anabolic style workout, which is essentially full body compound lifts, uh, two days a week. You're going to see, you're going to see some good gains. It, it, you'll probably get stronger by week two. Oh, wow. Yeah. We're going to definitely try it out. Yeah. Do you have I think that was one of the programs I didn't try out at the time. I think I didn't. Done two of your guys is just not all of them. I'll send it to you. Yeah. We'll send you maps and a bulk. Trust, you're going to love it. Yeah. Trust us and then circle back. I want to hear how it goes because I have a feeling you're going to see some great results. Yeah, from it, like, holy you shit. You got to trust it. You got to <laughs> trust us though. You got to stick with it. And then um, just one last question. I, I know I've heard you guys talk a lot in recent episodes about grams per protein and that like after you reach the over 0.8 mark per body or per pound of body you have uh it doesn't really help you any longer so if you're eating like say i'm hitting like 220 a day and i weigh 190 that's just excessive for no reason type of deal it's not going to hurt you yes yeah, especially somebody who's yeah. actually got is an intense labor right? yeah it's that's not going to hurt you that's a good amount but it's if good you, to pursue it but really. if you took out 30 grams and replaced it with 30 grams of carbs it's that's fine too it's not going to hurt you in other words Gotcha. I, I see. I see what you put as your average, one eighty to two twenty. That's actually beautiful. If you were a client of mine, oh, if you're averaging, yeah, stay there. Yeah, that's a that's a great spot to be for your at. body weight. Yeah, yep. and and, and then, going a little over is not bad. It's when people get excessive. Yeah, when two, they're like okay. two seventy five, three hundred grams, yeah. grams consistently. It's like yeah. that's that's excessive, and it's not doing them any good to to be eating that much. But 180, 220, an active guy like you trying to build, that's a you're you're in yeah, a perfect it gives you spot. Gastrointestinal stress, you know, like that kind of stuff. You get, yeah, I'd back off a bit, but other than that, you're doing fine. Gotcha. And then does it matter as far as like the carb ratio and the fat ratio? You know what I mean? How there's like the perfect macro split, which I don't really agree with, but I don't know. Yeah, it, as long as you're getting your essential fat, it doesn't matter. It's it's ba ba based it off of how you feel. And the reason why I say that, and I know the guys will agree with me, is some people just feel better with more carbs. Other people feel better with more fat. So that the only limiting factor is you got to get an, an, an adequate amount of fat because it's essential. Yeah, make sure you're getting at least 100 grams. So I don't know if you're tracking your fat right now or not. Make sure for your size, your amount of calories, your movement, you, you yeah, should like be 90 no, to 100. At least that, 90 to 100 grams. Yeah, That's, I think I'm, because I, I mean, I, I don't drink shakes. I get all my protein and fats from, from meat and I do eat a lot of meat. So I'm not 
sure if that matters either but i definitely get that's ideal that's, yeah. ideal that's ideal that's especially and you should be eating things like chicken thighs and having some tri-tip every now like yeah. you know feel free to eat good fatty meats because you can you can afford it all right on man well thank you guys i appreciate it you all got right. it man all right you know the other part of this the psychological part with people that work uh men and women that work hard labor is they're so used to the feeling of pushing themselves yeah. they're so used to the grind of work or whatever that they they i mean ev most people who are fitness minded tend to they tend to veer towards do what is tolerated and not necessarily what's ideal but these people really do it they just go and so it, it, it ends up happening they end up it's like work mm -hmm. i'm at the gym and oh i'm supposed to feel this way no and, and th that was the gauge i use with with people who work this kind of labor i'd say how do you feel at work well man i was it was hard for me to, to, to swing the hammer because my arms are sore. Yeah. So, okay, we got to scale back. You should feel better in your job, not worse. Well, okay. Yeah, well, that's the thing is like it, it's it's built this sort of idea that like it, doing hard labor, like I have to be able to complement that hard labor with hard training in order to get stronger. Like it has to have that kind of same intensity yeah. when in fact to, to make it complementary and actually, you know, be able to build and develop muscle, we need that adequate amount of recovery. Yeah. So he's a bit of an anomaly in our society today. It's just rare. Yeah. Like, so he's the opposite of the study that I've shared or where they talked about people that, um, uh, that, tr that report, not study, but the survey they did where people report, um, how active they are and yeah. most uh, people and most people consider themselves they over very yeah like people yeah. That who think they're very active or still work out are still day. considered sedentary even because they train an hour a day every day but then they have these jobs that are sedentary so yep. in the scheme of uh activity for the day they're extremely low they're still considered sedentary he's the opposite of that you got to remember that if he's doing physical labor eight hours a day every day or five days a week He's very active even without his training. And then you mm -hmm. taught you add an hour or two hours of lifting a week. He's more than active enough. And that's still a physical stress. Even if the body's adapted to it and it's used to it for years, it's yeah. still filling that that physical stress bucket. And so scaling back. If he I hope he trusts us and sticks to two days a week of anabolic, because I think within a month he's going to feel and see a difference right away. Yeah, I had a guy once I trained, he was a he played high level uh, high school football at a at a pretty high level. Then he got into construction afterwards. He was working out 4 to 5 days a week. He hired me. I got him down to 1 day a week and then eventually went up to 2 days a week. And he was hitting more numbers than he did in high school. He couldn't believe it. He's like, "We're working out so little." I'm like, "Bro, 90% of everybody I train, I have them strength train and then I find ways to make them active throughout the day." Yeah. You're already doing that. Yeah, All we got to do is covered. make sure you eat healthy. And just, you're not here to add activity. That's not why you're working out. We're working out to just try to build a little bit of muscle. And that doesn't take much. doesn't take much to do that. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our guides. We have free guides that can help almost anyone. Also, go to Instagram. We have a new fitness program. You pay monthly, under $5 a month. You get free workouts sent right there. It's all accessible on Instagram uh, every single week. Brand new workouts every week under $5 a month. It's at Mind Pump Media on Instagram. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 